What's happening, guys? Hello, hello, hello. Ah, uh, yeah. This is this is the uh, stream that a lot of you guys are gonna have to kind of squeeze in and out. Sorry about that. The uh, the heat is coming. Let's see here. Let's turn the volume down a little bit. Okay. Everybody good? Let's get some hellos out of the way. Florian, hello. James, Eric, uh, me. I said hello. <laughs> Franklin, uh, Andrew, Jean, uh, Squid, what's up? And Sylvain, and my boy Mike, another Mike, another Mike. <laughs> There's a lot of mics percentage wise. We're, we're rolling hard. Um, uh, good morning. I can't read your name though. What's. Uh, Put up an English name for me, please. Uh, in China, China or Korea, wherever we're at, I, I don't know that. This TC, okay, TC Hugh from uh, New Zealand. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. 7 a.m. Sweet. Uh, you're very welcome. He said he learned a lot with the episode three weathering. Zal, there you are, <laughs> dude. I don't, dude, I don't even know what you're doing right now. I don't know if you're awake or you're going to sleep. He's in Singapore. Oh no, hello, P to P. P2E. <laughs> I don't have to pee. I've already done my nature break. Yeah, I see you, Squid. Uh, Martin, what's up, bud? Uh, Focus, James, what's up? Uh, Jason, what's up? Yeah, so a few of you catch it, a few of you won't. As I've uh, mentioned last time, the heat is coming. Actually, the morning's been really nice. Luke, there you are. Welcome. Yeah, my favorite subject, too. Let me get some of the other pieces I put away and talk about them. I try to keep my bench clean. I try. I try sometimes. Let's bring in some other whitewash examples. Hold on a sec, guys. All right, I'm back. Just put some of those other models away in the closet. GB skill models. Yes, me too. Welcome. Yeah, you barely live, Zal. One eye open, brother. Don't worry, y'all catch the replay. What do we got here? It is uh, UK. Nog in the nog. Good morning, my friend. Joshua, welcome. Let's see, Arno Pete. Oh, yep. Oh, this is this is the fun one. Hello, Carlos. Marino, welcome. You made it this time, or early this time. <laughs> You're, Marina, remind me again, are you Alaska, Alberta, where, uh, hazy where you're at? South Africa, some question. When you sell your models, how do you package them securely? Double box method. So what you'll do, James, is uh, Christopher, hello, Mateo. When you ship a model, any kind of model, uh, pack the first one kind of loosely so you don't mess up the finish. You know, maybe like a paper towel wrap and then the soft peanuts around in a small box that's kind of just a little bit bigger than the model itself and then seal that up and then float that box in another larger box with peanuts all the way around it so you use a double box method it usually works pretty good rarely does anything get broken doing that you might get a little bit and then of course anything that's loose or you know like it's a gundam with a head or you know antennas uh, best to leave all your antennas loose for travel and shipping gareth hello matt in new york what's up the hobby shack Good evening, Frederick from Sweden. Okay, wonderful. Eric, hello, how's it going? Uh, not bad, my friend. Hope you guys are good. I'm a little bit bright and perky this morning on this bright on this wind, wonderful Wednesday, whatever's going on out there. Vivian Watts out of Northern Virginia. Oh my God, you blame your parents, right? New to armor modeling, many years on aircraft. Okay, sweet, welcome. Uh, Mike, what's up, bud? No, you're good. I know you're busy, my friend. You have an important task, Dicker. Keep that city safe. Mike, sorry for hitting you with the question right away, but it's been busy. I'll be uh, AFK. No worries, brother. I just want to know what the window of time to work the paint using thinner chipping. Um, do you mean wearing the paint off with thinner in that way? Or you mean hairspray chipping? It's just not too much. Yeah, you're welcome, James. Yeah, shipping a model is much art. Michael Weiss, there you are. Uh, hello, I'm trying to catch everybody. <laughs> Say my hellos. 
We'll get started here about 10, let everybody roll in a little bit. There's already a nice crowd rolling in. I figured this might be a little popular, so I'll give you guys a minute to uh, pop in. Uh, did a whitewash and a pair of 144 scale TIE Fighters. So much fun. Yeah, that's that's cool. John Barnacote, I read you. What'd you, what'd you say up there? You, I think you were you were talking smack. What'd you say? Hold on a sec. John said, hey, Mike, your whitewash helped me get some great AMPS awards a couple years ago. So all the years, uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. That's what I like to hear. One of my favorite things, I will say, um, without being pretentious or anything of the sort, is when you guys email me and say, hey, I you know, never got an award or whatever and, and you know, did your stuff. and that, that makes me feel like I'm doing the right thing. So I like that part. I appreciate that. What do we got here? We're in the paint to me acrylics. Oh, okay. So you, you, yeah, you are talking that process. Uh, usually any of these kind of acrylic based processes, Mike, I usually can move almost as fast as I clean and dry. So if I've airbrushed that coat down, clean the airbrushes, whatever, you can roll in with the thinner uh, to, to rub off the top coat because acrylics will dry and cure. The Mission models, I will say, I've been using them um, intensely a lot. Like this is all Mission on the bench here. Um, this is, this is some, I did some testing last night. We'll get into all this stuff in a sec, but yeah, I've been, that, that cure window is really powerful if you know how to use it. And we'll talk about that in, at, at length here. Uh, Cause there's kind of that erasability as it, as it cures. And then when it kicks off, it, it turns into kind of the other paints. So it's got some, some levels to it. Uh, which I look at as an advantage, to be honest with you guys. Uh, let's see, loving the Alpha Mike. Yeah, dude. I drove one, I drove a four light one. This is a GTA. I had a 71, uh, which is a 1750, but the previous owner put a 2000 CC in it. Uh, and it have dual Webers, 44s, I think, if I remember correctly. Uh, it was silver, or a faded silver. <laughs> Looked gray from a distance. Uh, a little 14 inch ATS five spokes. About eight years in LA with it, all through school uh, at Art Center and everything. It was the car, and I. It is. There's there's three or four decision decisions that you always regret over time. You know, that's probably number two or number three of selling that car. The motor blew. The the block gave out, cracked, and then I sold it to the mechanic who worked uh, on our cars. My my girlfriend and I. We all had Alphas for a long time. So yeah, this is my night. curb. This dude curb uh, went to school with the guy that does all this. <laughs> Rick, I love you, buddy. Rick says he spent all morning peeling off old paint off a, off a patio. Gonna be a chipping expert. He says welcome. Hello, buddy. Good to see you. Alexander Duchamp. Hola, amigo. This is my boy. Toronto. Okay, Kurt Marino. I, you know, I apologize. Somebody was in Alaska the other day. I don't know if you were driving around. Somebody was driving around. Mateo, somebody. Uh, we're getting the West Coast smoke on the East Coast. Are you really? Holy shit. We've been lucky. The, um, last year's fires were brutal. They blew right over Portland. Uh, just basically choked us out and then this year it's kind of moving around us we haven't really been hit with the actual smoke clouds uh, a little bit different even though I think the fires are worse this year okay Zal asks how do you prevent sandpapery finish when you airbrush okay so that is a you problem so everybody out there listening while you're going and rolling in here texture with airbrushing is a you problem it is not a paint problem it is not a brand problem you have messed up either your thinning ratio your air pressure ratio in the compressor, and most likely it's your distance. What that mean means, my, my little microphone, but this is too loud. Let me turn this down a little bit. I hear myself too much. Okay, there we go. I was getting a break. Um, yeah, so Zal, what that means is, is when you're getting texture on the surface from your airbrush, you are too far away. So that means the air is drying in the air and it's hitting as a dried particle, creating a sandpapery texture. That's exactly how that happens. It's almost 99%. That's how that happens. Everybody likes to blame the, the, the label in the bottle. It is a you problem. So yeah, it's that, and that my friend is just, you're going to be moving the airbrush in a little bit closer, probably drop your air pressure, a couple PSI. That's why I actually talk about the Mac valves because you can fine tune. And usually what I do, if I'm going to roll into a new paint job, I'll start somewhere kind of inconspicuous, like the bottom, you know what I mean? And kind of, okay, how's this going? <laughs> Always a little nervous. It's like a, it's like the first date, you know, you kind of like, do I open the door and then she likes that? Or do we just be the modern girl and she doesn't like me opening the door? You know, it's like, uh, so take your time, roll in a little bit slow, uh, and then adjust your air pressure. If it, if it keeps doing it, then add a little bit more thinner. Cause you're probably also too, too, uh, too dry in the mixture. In other words, you don't have enough thinner either. So the, the variables of airbrushing are one of the challenges, but once you kind of get your feet wet with all that and get really good at it, it it's almost second nature. 
So hopefully that helped to answer. Yeah, but any kind of textural problem is almost always an airbrushing uh, person problem. That's never a brand problem, unless you have bad paint, which is pretty rare. I'm not sure how that's gonna go over with the boss, but oh, <laughs> Cliff, you're fine, brother. Good, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Andrew. I always forget that. Yeah, please hit the like. And if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. It does actually really help with YouTube and how they function and perform. And um, we are now officially monetized. I've done the Google AdSense campaign process to apply for all that. Um, I had to jump through some hoops, but we're all done. I got my email for that today. So I can actually, you'll probably, if, if you're not used to seeing advertisements and stuff, you'll probably see some stuff pop up. Um, but that's just helping the channel grow. You know, I need cameras, I need equipment, I need new lights, I need a bunch of stuff. So those are all things long-term that we're working for. So they do help a lot. That lets me keep doing all this fun stuff. So let's see. Hello, Bill, how are you? James, welcome. Lufram, there you are. How's everybody doing? Um, yeah. What else we got? I'll give you guys a couple more minutes. Yeah, we're pushing almost 60 now on, on the view. So we'll get, we'll get up here a little bit, we'll get going. Uh, and then we're gonna roll into kind of um, how I tackle whitewashes. Uh, we'll go over the various processes. Um, the ones I have in hand here, models I've completed in the past, most of them happen to be whitewashes. <laughs> it just tells you how much I love it. Pete Smith, what's up brother? How are you, man? Uh, he wants new hats, true, true, true. Well, you know what's funny? <laughs> All my hats are for winter. This is the only like summer one. And the reason this one has a short bill, I tried wearing the baseball hats and the, the bill comes so far into the camera. So that's why this is my signature style, my friends. Uh, the butcher the other day when I walked in the store, he goes, yo, man. I go, what's up, bud? He goes, nice hat. <laughs> so thanks. So then I had to, of course, go buy some like little uh, Jimmy Jams for the oven because I, you know, I didn't want to like leave them hanging. Yeah, Maria, I am an F1 guy. I've been watching this a long time. Uh, looking forward to the Hungaro ring. And we'll have to figure out Sunday because I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to watch the race prior to the stream Sunday. I think the Hungaro Green race will be will be one of the most important races of the season, given what just happened. <laughs> so, uh, I don't uh, Zal, I don't do any collab with them. Um, it is just kind of a like a mutual friendship. I used to work for them years and years ago. They had a brick and mortar store, um, but we're small company, so the discount structure is pretty low. If you know what I mean, we're these are we're, we're micro businesses, so there's not a ton. In fact, prices are going to go up. I should roll into that in a kind of a shitty segue. I got an email this morning from our logistics people that we work with in Europe and the, the prices for VAT and all that. A lot of you are probably familiar with what's going on right now. Uh, we will have to raise prices. We, I can't avoid it anymore. The, the fees are charging back to us with the VATs because anything over 22 euros uh, gets tagged now. So until I get RSP set up uh, with its own VAT in, in structure, which will take me some time, uh, expect a small price increase. It won't be much, maybe 10%. So but that's just kind of awesome. That's for European orders. So those of you with European shipping orders and stuff, uh, you'll you'll see a small price increase. I don't think I have to raise prices internally for the U.S. Pretty sure, and I'll try not to. I historically, if you guys are familiar with or intimate with RSP and stuff, I've tried to keep the prices capped pretty hard. Uh, we do pay quite a bit of the portion of the shipping for most people, even in the U.S. In fact, the uh, post office sent us an email. Um, August, the second price increase is coming. So it's just, yeah. Shipping's out of control. If you guys are not paying attention to, and then we got the mandate today, CDC, wearing mask again. So yeah, it's, it's, we're not done. <laughs> we got a ways to go. But yeah. Um, yeah, Zell, I'd say for you, if you're looking to like buy in bulk and save a few bucks, and I know you're, you're in a faraway land, um, I would reach out to them on their website. They probably have a dealer list and find somebody in your region. I don't, I don't know who's over in Singapore selling stuff. I'd also try, you know, I personally go through uh, M Workshop as our direct dealer to Singapore. Uh, and, and I know Bernard can get almost anything. So, you know, push him on stuff if you ever buy from um, M Workshop. Wayne, there you are, how are you, bud? Okay, we're almost ready. We'll go, we'll go in about one more minute, give all you guys a second to settle in, have your coffee. Whatever you're doing, what is, I'm the only, probably only, Rick and I are the only two on the West Coast, right? Yeah, so just to repeat, usually today, I've been trying to do a 6 p.m. my time stream, um, which puts it Asia time, morning, New Zealand, Australia, kind of after, early afternoon, Tokyo, all those people over there, you know, I want to be fair, and then uh, Sundays were the afternoon streams for me. Uh, but we have a bad heat wave coming in, rolling temps are gonna be pretty pushing 40 degrees Celsius almost, so yeah, it's gonna get hot. So the earlier for me to paint and do all this, because today's gonna be a little bit more on the airbrushing part, I, I was aware of that. We're not gonna do as much oils, but we will show some mapping and some other stuff. So I think I caught everybody. Nero, there you are, how are you, welcome. Let's see, Darren there, just made it, you're fine. You are fine, my friend. 
Okay, so let me pull this guy out of the way. Let's get going here. Let me swap screens. Let's talk about whitewash for a second here. Zoom out. All right, all right, all right. Anybody else say it? <laughs> yeah, I don't even want to. Dude, you probably lose 20 pounds a day. Yeah, I'm bitching him on like a little girl over here. <laughs> I said like real jobs. Craig Mix, hey, good to see you, bud. Welcome. Okay, Carlos, hello. Yeah, afternoon in Brazil, my South America friends. Uh, got, I was reached out to by uh, one of the um, online guys of Argentina. They've been really nice. Uh, EVM or whatever their name is, I believe, is their little, their little letters. They've been kind of really nice too. Okay, so whitewashes, whitewashes, whitewashes. My best part are the papers. Oh, wait. Oh, 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 this happened about an hour ago. I just want to say thank you because uh, this happens every now and then. Uh, to my boys in the train world, Craig and all you guys, Jason, you guys have sent stuff before. I'd mentioned some end scan real quick and we'll jump right back. I just want to say thank you to Bryn in Ireland. Uh, I received your package today. Dude, that was fast, by the way. <laughs> that was like three, four days. Uh, end scale. Let me just show you what we're talking about here. And then we'll jump on the white wall. I just want to do a quick note of thank you because he sent this to me. So this is HO, this was the red dude, and then you can see where we're gonna be doing some stuff in end scale. So I think it's like 1 1 60th, I believe, or 1 1 48th, they have kind of a vague number. I don't know, just call it 1 1 50th. But anyway, I just wanna say thank you. I got some Cadbury chocolates, got some mints. Yeah, pretty sweet. Little little test box he said he sent me. Oh, all right, the books, the books, the books, the books. Yeah, we'll get back on trains in, in a little in a future stream too. I'm just rotating around. I'm trying to give everybody a little bit of love in the first you know couple months of all this stuff, and then we'll, we'll branch off into some hardcore uh, stuff. <clears throat> yeah, I don't really want you guys to send me a lot of stuff. It was just kind of a conversation going on, and he and he just was generous because it's an area I'm usually pretty well stocked and everything. I just trains are I'm kind of new, so these dudes have a lot of extra stuff that they just been messing with. Like for me, I don't even know, like the stuff in the box, I don't even know. I mean, I know what it is, but like, I don't, you know, I don't know. Don't worry about it, Sal, you're good, you're good. Uh, but I actually will, I know some of you guys are interested. I will be doing a Patreon a launch in a couple of weeks. But uh, what else we got? Tomas, hello, hello. Okay, so, I found these the other day. We'll just kind of roll through. Give me about 10 minutes of talking about reference and research here. Cause this is, to successfully do what we're gonna do, you kind of need to spend some time with this. And so it's, it's kind of a quick recap. I was, I don't know where I hid these guys. These are old eBay purchases, maybe 10, 15 years ago. Um, you know, it's just kind of things that, you know, th nowadays you can't even buy these. These I probably spent 10 bucks on these photos. I believe they're original or at least reproductions from the 50s or 60s. Uh, I think that the small two by threes, it's like a business card. Let's see if we can get a little zoom action on that. Um, so my personal favorite, like if you all asking that, what's your favorite tank, Mark? <laughs> It's this one. This is the one. This guy, the Stug B, the the, the Stug Three B. Uh, early Russia stuff. I love this kind of winter stuff. This is a little. I bought this because it's a little. You rarely get multiple photos of the same vehicle in the same moment, which I always try to key in on, because you get another view, which is always really cool. This one's mostly covered in snow, I think. I don't think there's even any whitewash on this one, because you can see on the nose here it doesn't have any. But I just love these little guys. I found them the other day. Uh, this this Stug is, is pulling this, uh, and you guys probably know what the trailer is. There's even a kit available. I think there's an old resin kit of the trailer. But anyway, that's found that the other day. I wanted to share that with you guys. You know, a little little research flexing for you guys. So let's see. What I, I tagged some stuff. Let's just open stuff at random. Whitewash, whitewash, reference. All right, guys, it's really, really crucial that you find stuff to work on that you can relate to. Stuff I'm looking at here. Let's zoom back in. There we go. Look at that. Yeah. Looking at all this stuff right in here, the wear and tear. These are the, you know, where his elbow is, even though there's a shadow, that, that part there is going to get worn off. I'm looking at all these things. This is actually snow and dust. Uh, I don't think I'll get to that part today in terms of actually adding that stuff on, but we're just going to focus on the paint, um, the whitewash stuff. These are the things that are really important to really look at. Uh, this one's not a whitewash, but I do want to take a, I did want to take a second to just say, Uba guy, help. welcome, another Singapore fellow. You guys are crazy, man. Uh, Cliff, you and Evan have the same taste. Yeah. You know, I've been watching this stuff a little bit more. Like, I didn't really know who Evan was, per se. You know, not to be a dick. I just, you know, there's so many dudes out there. 
Um, this photo's awesome, dude. I just, not not that it's not a whitewash, but it's just, uh, look at these dudes. Like that, is that, there's like three or four of you in the chat that I know that's the morning after. <laughs> but anyway, the, this part here, the dust. One thing I like to do uh, that's really kind of nice is even though this is not a whitewash, you can pretend it is. If I'm looking at this kind of stuff here, right in here, this is what we're talking about. This was a really cool photo. It's really nice, sharp and crisp. So these kind of like what happens over here, this is all relevant because it is kind of a wintry, they're obviously cold because they're heavily geared up. But definitely want to get your uh, get your references going. Yeah, they're, they're cool stuff. This is this is my favorite. So one of my favorite uh, book series from Japan, Sturm and Drang. These are older. I tried to find the copyright on this thing. Japanese hide this stuff. 1990. This is pretty old. It's getting up there. 1990. Some of you probably weren't even born in 1990. Bunch of kids out there. Sturm and Drang. I've kept all mine. This is one of the few series I will n I will not part with. My Sturm and Drang or my Octum Penses. Japanese did it right back in the day. So this one is really nice. So they're all on each subject. So this one's all in the Stug 3. There's King Tigers. There's Tiger 1s. Panthers. Tiger. You know, it's, it's all Germans. It's all that stuff. So if you're not into this stuff, that's okay. We got some allied stuff to discuss in a second. So I'm just, because this is the subject of today, we're gonna be looking, I'm just looking at some of the things. I'm looking at the wear and tear in general before I actually get into the whitewash. There's actually a pretty cool little photo over here too. This is mostly uh, just snow. I think I zoomed the page again, didn't I? I'm second. But this is the kind of stuff that, that when I'm, you guys are looking for, this is an important key element. This is, this is the money shot right here. This is why you, we'd go through all this stuff. So this dude here. Let's try to get this out of the way for a second. It's really important because this is, this is how you do it. This is if you want to advance to the, to the big dogs and, and play on the table and really try to, and now I think I did an okay job. It's not my best work, but I also hit the limitations of my skill set with this one. So using this photo was, I'm trying to get the glare off of there, was really the emphasis to really develop out the chipping on this guy. And that's what I'm talking about, kind of a really utilizing the, like up in here to up in here. And I didn't really do as good a job here on this. I got a little bit more of a contrast in there. But I really tried to mimic as well as I could with the skills I had to get as far into that as I could by really diving into this and really studying because it's just a huge photo. It's, you know, it's, it's A4 size, almost A3 size. Or what, A3 is bigger, it's A4. A little bit smaller than A4, I think. But you can kind of see like how the, how the front of the headlight is worn away, but this headlight over here, this headlight cover, I should say, the blackout covers over here, this one's got a little bit of like, some sort of grease stain or something, but it's got a little bit of the whitewash left in it. But all these photos, the little, like all this stuff here. This is why I push hairspray so much. This is so hard to replicate at this precision with the other techniques. Not that you can't, it's just, it's really, really, really difficult. <laughs> the hairspray does give you that advantage to get that kind of stuff. And that's one of the key elements to, hair, uh, to whitewash in particular, is to really look and studying. But see, the thing is, here's the problem. I have to kind of make up the rest of it. <laughs> So that's kind of what happens with a lot of these things is, is you only get one or two choice photos. That's why I said earlier, if I can find a couple of views of the same vehicle, especially something I'm really working on, those are the ones you really want to really want to go with. And of course in black and white, then I have to interpret the dust and the mud and some of the other stuff going on. Um, that's actually one of my favorite projects I personally did. Even though I, I kept, I did about three of those and I still hit my limits on that one, like in terms of my skills. Um, so these sermon drinks, these are great. Uh, reference, reference, reference. Okay. So these guys here, because we'll actually start with the allied stuff today. Because what I did last night, and again, just give me a sec to get through this, because this is kind of just getting the baseline information for what we're going to talk about today. I think it's this guy here. Yeah, it's not that guy. Hold on one second. Should have marked the one that actually had the whitewash on it. Did, but okay. Yeah, these guys here. Okay, so plus on the Allied side too, because everybody put white on in the winter. So we've got the Cromwell, we've got a Cromwell turret. That's it. See, this is where the photos are just like, they're a little bit on the small side where you're really struggling to kind of figure out what's going on a little bit. Hard to see some of the details. But then on this Churchill here, this is another really nice photo too. This is a well-known photo. 
with whitewashed church here rolling through town. But you can see in here, what I'm looking at is, I'm looking at where, so that's probably from the boots. You know, they're kicking these as they step up and there's a little ledge right there. They're probably kicking those. And then as they reach up on here, so this is where the natural wear and tear happens. It looks like they barely bothered even putting the whitewash on the barrel. There's some wear on the spare track up there. Then all down in here and it gets, so it also, with winter whitewash in particular, welcome Brian. One of the things, um, and this is a great book too. If you guys don't have some of these JJ Fedorowicz books, these are these are worth their, their money. I just popped it right open the page. Here's a Russian KV-1. And what I like about this one in particular uh, is kind of comparatively speaking to the white background, you can, it gives you a reference for how opaque this is. That's the stuff you need to look at to determine when you're really trying to go for, for a little bit more of a, of a subtle look. You really study the snow around it to see how opaque the whitewash really was. And you can kind of see over here on these tigers, a little bit of a glare off, yeah, there you go. Another great photo. I mean, but you can see, so what I'm looking at here, you know, the mud air, you can see the mud splay splatter going back up that way. Uh, but you can see how clean the back exhaust actually is. So as that track throws it up, they probably kicked back that, the back of that tank probably splashed something down. You know, as that track turned forward, you know, as it rotated up, that butt went down in the mud and kicked that back up. But again, the white, compared to the white. So it gives you also an idea how fresh the, how fresh the paint job was. Um, cause, cause white washes are usually a distempered paint, which means they're naturally designed to be worn off on their own. So that by the time the spring hits, they're back to their camouflage. This is the book I used, um, for the tiger two. There's, that's not the winter. Let's see. Okay. So here's like, you know, and these, and this is why I go with the more worn look. Cause to me, this just isn't very interesting. <laughs> Um, these, these are right off the train. These, they, they've just rolled in from the rail. These are, these are really well-known photos in the Panther world for those of you that really study this stuff. Out of Koval, which is, where's Koval? Is it Western Russia or Poland? Yeah, Warsaw, it's in the Polish campaign. Um, so this is kind of one of the things that I spend a lot of time going through this stuff and studying these photos. You know, how does the snow look in the tracks? How is it compacted up in there on a Tiger II? Like you need to see this stuff so that you can you can do. Uh... Are you talking about the whitewash paints in the photos? Yes, Gary asked. If, hold on, Zal. Uh, Gary asked Mike, would you go back and rework the model if you're skilled? Yes, absolutely. And I've actually done that in a few books. I'll talk about it here in a sec. Oh yeah, this is this is one of my favorite photos of, of just weathering photos in general. So this is the back of a half track. Focus. There we go. This is money. This is the stuff you really have to study. All these scratches, where, which the directions are going, the runoff, the bleed. So Zal, what I was talking about is a distempered paint is is in the vernacular of in the field. These guys are slapping stuff on. It's probably just a in, in our terms today like a house paint, and they're just slapping this stuff on either via quick airbrush or mops or brooms or whatever. So it just depends on what kind of systems they have. It's good, Darren. There's, there's your, there's your, there's your reference, my friend. But yeah, it's, these, these books in particular, these heavyweight books. This is, this book's probably in the hundred, hundred fifty dollar range. But uh, yeah, JJ Fedora, which publisher. Um, you know, I always, you always got to have a couple staples. You build your library up. This poor guy. <laughs> Eventually, we'll, we'll get around to fixing him. But things I'll show here a little bit later today. So what you see here, uh, I laid down. Obviously on top of the four bill green, I put down a hairspray and then we sprayed some, you can see kind of that, that real soft white and kind of faded out. And then we went back with some mapping and we, we punched up some opacity, kind of a real, sometimes they'll redo the, the, the whitewashes over time is a wear off pretty fast. And then they want to re-camouflage themselves. So in between battles or movements, they'll, they'll come back in and slap a fresh coat of whitewash on. And remember these are young soldiers, you know, probably, you know, some are teenagers, some are young twenties. They don't care how it looks. We care how it looks, but. <laughs> TK, welcome. But yeah, this guy, I think I mentioned this guy before where I bought him back off of eBay. This is an old model. So I bought this model literally for the purposes of just slapping some white paint on it. It was already built and painted in the olive drab color. I actually don't believe I painted the base olive drab. I think I just painted and weathered right over it or did my, my Jimmy Jams right over that. But this is another type of whitewash where these guys are, um, it is, this was a certain, um, campaign thank you uh in like november of 44 uh, the last winter 
uh, for the Brits and they were moving through, oh my gosh, my brain's gonna fade on me now. Um, I forget the name of the campaign. In fact, this is the ultimate, I didn't even fix these panels. These are post-war panels, by the way. If you ever build a Tamiya Mark VII Churchill, those three panels are post-war. They shouldn't be on there because the, the reference that they used was a museum piece, uh, which was a post-war piece. But anyway, I didn't even bother fixing this stuff. So this is kind of the different types of, you have kind of um, an early war whitewash that's being worn off in the field in Barbarossa, heavy campaign, very active unit, uh, probably fighting something similar to this on the Russian side. Of si uh, on the Russian side. This is probably the year after, most likely. And then you got a late war uh, European, Western European type whitewash form, which is basically, there's plenty of pictures of this too, you just basically taking mops and just brushing this stuff on. And they didn't even bother with the top. So there's, a, there's kind of a top view photo where you can kind of see that the top isn't painted. But So anyway, let me get these little dudes out of the way. Some of these will eventually be redone. The Stug's pretty much ready to go. I don't think I'll mess with that. I won't touch the Stug again. I won't, I won't be doing anything with them. I liked it as it is. So Gary, yeah, what I had done, It's a good story because I actually do think it's a good idea, especially if the model is a well done model where you have the ability to actually go back over it a little bit. So this tiger on the cover, even though it's not a, a whitewash one, through the first part, through the first part of this article, up to up to here. I took it to your military in this state and it got a silver in that that level there. And I knew I could do better. I, I just felt I'd rushed it. I didn't do my job. Uh, and it's right when I kind of got into oil paints. I came home and then I started to really just add a whole new level of, of weathering onto it. I think I talk about it in the book pretty well. And then going into adding some more, just really punching it up, Gary, you know, really just kind of coming back and say, okay, my skills have improved. I kind of did some cool dust techniques. Uh, with the airbrush, which is what I talk about all the time now, where I'm dusting that fixer down, you know, with the little spritz in it with the fixer on, on the dust layer. So really punching up. So if you look at this one here to where I was here to that. So that's kind of going back and, and redoing, redoing one. Um, and then the same thing I did on the AMX 30, where I was just doing, a, I just did a little bit more OPR, like I did a whole nother level of OPR on it for the second edition printing of this book. Uh, just just because I want to take it, I just want to see where I could push a little bit further. There's a lot of this kind of chalky white bleed runoff in these forest uh, AMX 30s that were put out the pasture. And there's some good photos of how this kind of, this like calcium deposit or something in the water, something in the rain, something on the surface, that they have these really bright contrasty in the forest, like dusty bleed runoff things. Um, so I went back and punched that up and then kind of emphasize some of the um, chipping and stuff that I did up on that. You want to touch, they want to focus the camera. So yeah, just coming in here and just adding some of this real subtle little um, kind of variations in tone and just adding more depth to it, adding more depth to it. Uh, and you can do that with the oil paints. That's the beauty of it. Because once it dries its paint, you can just go back over it. Uh, yeah. I know some of you guys are jonesing pretty hard on this. <laughs> I love it, dude. You guys are awesome. Okay. So last night. So to prep for today a little bit. So you guys can see that pretty good. Okay, cool. So just took a, I have had a second Cromwell turret. Oops, did I get muted? Am I muted? You guys can hear me? Got a little note says I'm muted. Everybody good? Yeah, you guys can hear me, okay. Um, what I had done, I had a second Cromwell turret that I, um, I bought a few Tamiya Cromwells that were built up on eBay years and years and years ago. I was going to do a series of like painting articles. It was part of the MMIR series, and so I had some stuff prepped and ready to go, just out of the box, nothing special. Uh, and this is one of the Allied ones, and so I had an extra turret. So I threw some um, some green on it. Just I don't think it was like a NATO green or anything. I didn't care what color it was. It was just a green. Um, thank you, Brian. Appreciate that. Then I put one coat of hairspray on last night. And then I did, this is Mission Models. And then over here, we swapped back out and we put on one coat of uh, Tamiya White, their X2. Actually, it's a gloss white. Uh, and sometimes with white washes, it's fun to play with the gloss a little bit because you get a variations in kind of the opacity, how it looks. Gloss has a certain depth to it a little bit. Uh, Bill, there you are. You're in chat this time. <laughs> You're not in the comments. Good job. Um, so yeah, the Tamiya White and then a little bit of a, it just gives you a little bit of a different look because um, you can come back over. We'll do some mapping over this in a little bit today. 
and I'll do another layer on top of this and we'll see what happens. And then over here, this still has one layer of hairspray. Now this has been dried out since maybe 10 p.m. last night. We'll see what happens, just a little bit of an experiment. And then I'll dust some fresh hairspray down and we'll spray some white over that and we'll see what happens to that. So we got stuff to do. And then, seeing how far we get, I don't know if I'm gonna do this whole thing today, but we'll, we'll pop this guy on. And just real quick, uh, and I'll recap it later when I talk about it. So this is Tamiya Stug B. I did a red primer layer with the Mission Models red primer. Out of the box build, nothing special. Whole thing was coated in red. It immediately went into not NATO black, <laughs> although I did use some. And immediately used their uh, the Early War Anthracite RAL 7016, which is a really nice dark rich Panzer Gray. And then I top coat layered that like a dust coat. And I'm not going to go through. So the reason I'm not showing this one to one <laughs> took a long time. You know, it's a couple hours of airbrushing. It's you know, it's a whole stream of airbrushing, and we're not. I just we have to talk about whitewash, uh, but we'll talk about Panzer Gray coats later. I put a few drops of NATO Black into the Panzer Gray and then dusted that back over. And then what I did, very much like our turret where I did the, the burnishing. If you guys recall, let me pop this guy out. If you guys recall in the chipping stream, way back when, seems like forever ago. Up in here. All this stuff here. When I did it that day, you see that shift in color right there? That darker from the burnishing? This is a matte, like pale color, and then you burnish and it gets kind of a richer tone. It's the same thing here I did with the Panzer Gray. Now it's gonna be covered in the whitewash, so I'm gonna lose a lot of this effect, but I was just kind of having fun. You see as I rotate, what happens? You're getting a really nice kind of burnish from, and, and if um, you're unfamiliar, a lot of World War II boots in particular um, are metal knobs on the bottom. I forget what that's called. You guys probably know. But the boots aren't like soft rubber boots back in the war. So those 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 boots oftentimes will start really scuffing the paint up. Plus the fabric of the clothes, the gear, the stowage. So this gets kind of an early base sheen down where you've got a matte with a burnished matte paint, if that makes sense. Let me see if I can grab that photo. The reason this is important, my friends, Hold on, let me see if I can find it. I'm surprised, surprised I didn't mark it. I thought I did. Uh, but I kind of know my books pretty well. <laughs> so, kind of know where it's at. And come on, where are you? Can't one more picture. Oh, that's a money shot, too. This is another money shot, too, by the way. That's all dust. Let's back up. You can see how... So when... When we talk about colors, hobnails, thank you, Nog, thank you, exactly, hobnail boots. Yeah, so the, the bottom of a sole of military boots in the war, most of them were hobnails, which is kind of a, uh, kind of like a, well, it's a nail. So it's metal, it's metal on paint, and that'll mess up stuff pretty good. I want you to look at how dark that is. That, that, that's a really dark Panzer Gray. So I'm not a fan of the light blue Panzer Grays. Darren asks, what, are you putting a coat of hairspray? Not on this one, um, where I'm at right now, Darren, I did not, I went primer red, uh, and the mission models gray right over it and because of that that erasability level a little bit um, I could get some subtle color chipping out of that, which is what you're seeing with the red popping through. Sorry I should have mentioned that. Thank you for that um, Another great great photo. This is when you're talking about where to wear where do you add your wear and tear again? This is dust So it's important it's, it's really important to kind of find these photos You can see how the barrels clean up in here what I'm really studying is, is are these parts right in here? Like, see what he's doing right there? That's exactly what I'm talking about. That's how that happens. It's all over the place. Like a stud. <laughs> um, I, I had a photo, I thought I had it set up where it was it was basically a fresh and service Stug 3. And you can see the, the variance in mats and the sheens really nicely done. Maybe it's a disturbing train. Hold on real quick. Give me one second. Maybe I can find it. Maybe. 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 I could dive through books all day, but we'll start painting here in a sec. I, prom I promise. Okay. God, these are just money shots. I forgot how good. These, I mean, I don't, I don't, watch, I don't read these books enough. I forget how, how good some of this stuff is. There's like 50 Stug Three projects lined up in. Oh, here we go. I found it. I found it. I found it. Okay. There you go. This is a fresh off the line rolling into combat. You can kind of see. So what I'm looking at here 
is you see the pop of highlight there on the wheel, there's a little bit of sheen. You see the dead matte rubber. You see the pop of sheen on the visor over here on the side. You're getting a little bit of a sun bop on the, on the Notec light. As you rotate it around, it's dead matte on the vertical. You're getting the fabric of the barrel cleaner. And as you roll up, you, you've seen the various sheens. When I talk about varnishes, you guys really ask about varnishes. One of the things that's really going on in my brain is I know if I varnish this, I lose all of that, that level of ability to really achieve that. So this is why I really try to avoid the varnish conversation and the painting conversation in time because I really want to capture what I'm doing here where I'm starting to get some of that same So you see I'm getting a little bit of a highlight on the visor there, but the sides are fairly matte. And as I, as I rotate up, I'm getting a little bit of a hot spot on the, on the Notec light. And I'm getting a little bit of, and I haven't painted the tires, so there's no rubber on that. But I'm getting, so I'm getting my sheens already, and that's just by me studying the reference material. If you don't get to that level where you're really doing that, uh, that's the Sturm and Drang Stug 3 book. It's, it, Dominique, go back up a little bit, and I, in the stream, and, I showed the titles of all of those. Are, dude, they're awesome. Yeah, if you, if you, can, if you can find the Sturm and Drangs, they're probably hard to find. I believe they're out of print. Uh, good luck, they'll be expensive, I think. I've had those for 15 years. But, you know, building your reference library is, is a critical thing, especially for historical modelers. But anyway, this was kind of what I was doing. I was really keen on that. Because what's gonna happen is, I wanna show you how much you lose when you start painting back over that. Uh, but we'll do this here, and oops, this guy. So these are the subtle, like when, when, you know, in particular, like I've got my competition hat on right now. If I'm, if I'm prepping for an old school Euro military, uh, those are the things I'm really, really looking, looking forward to. And I burnished it. Thank you. Good question, Marino. Um, whoops, that's not that. You just eye dropper. Just this guy. And I'll show you, I'll show you some stuff here. Zoom, zoom. Just a little bit of water uh, unloaded and just this little scruffy brush. Uh, and so what I was doing, oh, that's, thank you, Marino. It's actually what I wanted to show you guys real quick. I love this stuff, man. I, I think I think whitewashes are, are some of the more interesting. Uh, and you can put this on your Gundams. You can put this on you know any of your other science fiction stuff. Try to get the. I try to get. The, is, you see it when the light rotates. You can see see all these little. So it's just the regular matte paint. There's there's a Panzer gray layer and there's a little slightly darker layer above. And so what I what I've done is I put a little water on the brush, I unload it. It's it's fairly it's almost basically dry. That's actually that's actually too wet. And this paint's actually cured for half a day, so we'll see what happens. So I kind of just do a little scrubby love like that. You get a little bit you see a little bit of red coming through now. I'm getting a little scruffy on purpose because I want to kind of have a little bit of a natural scruff with that. I'm kind of pushing the brush forward, scruffing it around side to side. It's this, I'm using the sides of the bristles a lot too. And just kind of understanding where the burnishing is going to kind of go. I cut, I too much water, I cut right through to the red down there a little bit. So this paint's still activated by water a little bit. I, I'm trying to figure out that that hard number to give you guys on that on this on the mission models on this burnishing ability with the with the paint. I mean uh, the erasability factor, sorry, not burnishing, but yeah. One of the things I've learned too is especially when you study Panzer Gray a lot, uh, we have so much black and white photos. And the reason you're seeing some of the red pop through a little bit is I think in black well in black I know in black and white photos, you you'll never see it. The red and the dark gray are almost the exact same value through black and white film. It's really, really difficult, but I do think um, if the late war stuff chipped, you know, 44, 43 plus chips pretty well, I think the Panzer Gray probably chipped at some point too. Or at least what I was trying to do is get kind of a scuffy, scrubbed off look a little bit. I don't have any like real good color photo references of it, but it's just something I just feel is kind of, it's in my gut. <laughs> you guys probably yell at me like, no, it never happened, but whatever. It's okay. But you can kind of see what I did right there real quick. And that's what I was doing all over the place. 
Well, the problem with the whitewash is it'll cover all up. <laughs> okay, let's spray. Let's get some paint going. Actually, let's see. This is so. Let me just see if we get any any activation at all. Probably not. This this actually was a really some water. I slapped some water all over that. You can see it. Just wanted. There you go. That's how much water I put down. That's a lot of water for me. I'm just scrubbing. I'm just scrubbing to see if I get any off of it. And right now it's not coming off at all. And that's actually insignia white too, by the way. It's kind of a, a, like an off-white shade, which is pretty cool. Hello, Gunner. Welcome, my friend. I did get your note just a, a little bit ago, by the way. Good to see you, brother. I haven't seen you in a long time. Hope you're well over there in, 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 the, in the fatherland. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so in this, this one I know is not going to go at all. This, one's, this one kicked off fast. So th again, to repeat, what I did was I just, I'm testing this out. I did one coat of hairspray on this, and it re it's fairly resistive. You can see the look I get with that. It's not a hard chip thing getting kind of a nice soft little faded thing. So let's let's spray some paint and let's see what happens. We're gonna do a little bit of experiment because I wanna show you guys as we go how this how this happens, but also uh, we'll, we'll start flexing a little bit more on the, on the Stug uh, as we get to that here in a sec. So I got, uh, let's spray some Insignia White. Move the tripod today, so I'll bump into it too much. I hope I don't anyway. I probably will. I set the cameras up this way on purpose. Um, it's a little bit difficult for me sometimes, but at the same time, what I really want is the same POV. Bryce, welcome, bonsoir. It's it's really important to me. You see it from my point of view. Having the camera over here shooting down is going to distort it a little bit. I'd rather right now put my effort into really giving you guys the one to one of what I see and how I do this. That's why I set it up this way. So there are, uh, there is an end game with that. It is a little bit clumsy sometimes, but that's okay. You guys are used to me bumping into shit by now. Okay, let's, uh, and we'll mix right in the cup. Okay, so then a little insignia white. I've been using this paint quite a bit, so a quick shake of it works pretty good. Uh, it's Cromwell, Dan. This is the Tamiya Cromwell. Just a test model though, nothing special. So let's put in three, three drops. One. I don't need much. Uh, where's my little thinner thingy? Okay, so I got some Mission Models thinner right here. So in this particular case, there is one old coat of hairspray on this right now. Just to recap real quick, um, we're gonna do a little bit of a test, see how it goes. It's probably not gonna go very well. <laughs> tell you that right now. I, I, I fought that pretty good last night to get that off, so. Um, let's put. Uh, one, and, one and a half, kind of was conservative with that a little bit. Just a little mixing barbarically right in the cup. Yeah, so I'm watching that drip down off that brush. I can probably do just a hair wetter, actually. There we go. Let's see if I can do that again for you guys. This is what I look for in most paints, acrylics in particular. Oops, hold on. Just to show you guys, mix and brush, mix and paint in the cup like this. You just can see that runoff. That's a nice speed of runoff. Any any running any more than any faster than that, then you're you're going on the thinner side of life, which is totally cool. Uh, you just have to know what you're doing. You know what I mean? Like just be aware of it. And that's how you judge things. In particular, you can be more precise with the measurements. So that's no big deal. I'm just showing you guys as I'm trying. I'm trying to hit those little subtle things that we do on the daily. Okay, what do we got? The view's very good. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about, Dominic, was really just kind of, uh, it's important to teach in the sense that you're not from a distance with me. I really want you guys to be at the same kind of, like like less than a foot, you know, 10 centimeter, 12 centimeter, 16 centimeter. Uh, I'm, I always spray it around 12, 15 on the, I think right now it's set up on the compressor. Looks like it's around 13, 14. And then with my Mac valve here, open it up full and I can close it down so I can get it down to almost zero if I want to. 
so I can go from the max of the compressor on down so I can really fine tune my spring. And I listen to it, I'm always listening to the sounds. It sounds really nice because I actually just cleaned the airbrush this morning. <laughs> so, should we know? so again, old coat of hairspray, one level only. Usually I tell you two, but let's see what happens because I want kind of a... And I'm spraying kind of poorly in terms of like a, like a field applied. I'm not trying to be all pretty. Go a little bit heavy around the bolts and the cracks because it'll stay in there a little bit. And this is a test piece, so I'm not trying to impress. I'm not trying to do anything other than let's put some white down and see what happens. And this is Mission Models Insignia White. We'll do some Tamiya spraying in a second. Let me clean the airbrush real quick. That's as quick as it goes. It's pretty simple, dude. This is good times. That's it. Whitewash is done. Welcome. Thanks for coming by. <laughs> See y'all later. I'm fucking with you. Oh, you are my boys. You guys are my homies. Okay. I know if you're here watching Whitewash, we all have the same interest aligned, right? So Mike Parkinson asked, sorry, it's been answered before. Do you have a pre preference? Tresemme two or three? Uh, two or three? I've never seen the twos, actually. Uh, I have a three. And I tend to recommend, Mike, on that is just kind of a middle to low strength range. You can use the, um, you know, I'll pull it. I, I got a four. Let me, let's, we'll, we'll, we'll mess around because I know some of you guys can only get certain ones. So I'm just kind of clean this airbrush real quick. I'm trying to be a little bit better job with my airbrush cleaning on stream. Even though I do clean quite, <laughs> spend a lot of time cleaning it after streams too, but that's okay. And I'm letting that sit a little bit too, by the way. So one of the reasons for this is because of that erasability factor. And you hear me talk about it a little bit more because we're getting into it a little bit more and more and some of you guys are experiencing it and not really sure what that is. So with the Mission Models paints, it's an organic water-based paint. It has a window of cure time. Actually Vallejo and Life Color also act the same way. Um, there's kind of a, an early window where the first, I'll call it like the first hour, you can really do some stuff where without anything in between, you can really start rubbing it off in various degrees of wear and tear to create a patina. Well, it's, it's the same idea of using a hairspray, it just doesn't have any hairspray in between because the paint kind of comes off on its own a little bit as it starts to cure. After about four to five to six hours, which is where this guy was at about the six hour mark, nothing comes off, it's down, it's gone. Uh, there was a little bit of poly on the green. So I'm, there is a window and I'm trying to kind of develop it for you guys to give you that more precise information. Like I know all about it, I'm just like, well sometimes it's a half hour sometimes, and it depends on the, the thickness of the paint, how much thinner you put down, there are variables. So none of this, this is more advanced stuff by the way guys. This is, as we're talking about, these are the things that, you know, it takes practice, you have to kind of feel it out. So, but basically, cause we put that down, how long ago was that, like three, four, five minutes ago? You are among friends. <laughs> I know, I feel like I'm in my crew. Kate, okay, there you are, welcome. Hello all, S3 Model Works, got caught doing housework and laundry. Good, good, good. Get you guys while you're doing your chores. That's what I was hoping for. Um, let's see, GA is mostly the three, okay. Yeah, so my usual, my go-to, this big can here. And in the US, these are pretty easy to find, you know, at any of the major stores, uh, shopping centers, you know, anything that sells general goods, groceries. So that's the three's the medium, and I, and I usually can buy that next to the men's stuff. I have a travel one that is actually a four. I saw it in the little travel, you know, when you're traveling, you know, the little, the little tiny dudes. This one's a four, so we'll try and see if there's any real hard, they're usually a, the fives get pretty tough. They just act a little, there's more lacquers in them that stick to the hair. They're more for like an all day hold, so they tend to be a little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me have no hair. Ross, there you are, Rivet. Okay, so that's been on the, on the surface for a few minutes now. Clean the airbrush enough, hopefully. And got my water, focus. Okay, let's see what we get. You guys all see that pretty well? Okay. So I'll start with this brush. And I was using it a second ago, so it's got a little bit of water on this. So I'm kind of resting, I'm resting the base of this wood on the table. I need just enough distance, so I'm gonna probably bump the camera a few times. I'll 
try not to. And we can move slow. There's no hurry with this stuff. So as I've said before many times when we start doing this stuff, start really slow. It's better to go more on the dry side just to see what happens. Just come on kind of, yep. So I can see it's already happening pretty good. So today's gonna go a little bit better. So that's one coat of hairspray. So you can see right here, and I'll go real slow for you guys because this is the important stuff. So already just by brushing the, just going over the top of that, it's already going pretty quick. So I don't need a lot of water on this one, which was weird because last night was, I had to actually get pretty serious with it. <laughs> so there's probably a little bit more hairspray over here. I probably, when I sprayed my hairspray, I wasn't, I was just in a hurry and I didn't get enough hairspray on the back plate here of the turret. So I'm just using the residual water on the brush right now. And I'm pushing center out, center out, see what's going on there. Really nice. Moving down below it. We're done. That's it, man. That's gold. That is gold right there. And that's what I'm trying to show you guys is, is this is the viewpoint, this is the brushwork, this is the, the water level. Mission Models is a, is a more delicate early painting system until they really start to kick off and cure. So again, my brush is basically almost beautiful fingernail. <laughs> Try to trim my nails, guys. So that's what the brush looks like. You can see the skin. There's there's almost no water on that, even though I can feel the brush is like wet, but it's not. Doesn't make any sense at all. English is a messed up language. What do we get a little thin? This is what this is the, uh, the the ammunition ejection shoot I believe right after they, they fire they pop those round the shell casings out so you're probably gonna get a little bit more wear down low so using kind of the tips of the bristles I'm kind of just wearing that off a little bit so up here to this little tie down thing up here you see that make sure it's nicely focused. Figuring the tie down is going to be a heavily used spot of tying stuff. And so in the process order of workflow while I'm doing this is uh, you're going to want to get all this done early. This is early, early, early painting work. I actually talk about chipping in most of the, the publication stuff that I do as uh, chipping is part of the painting process and not the weathering process. And I do this because this is when it all happens is in the painting stages. You're going to do this. I actually paint most of my armor models and most of my weathered Gundam stuff that I'm going to weather up and chip for sure, and I know I'm going to chip it, I will actually base coat. I'll, I mean, I'll prime it, of course. I'll set that all up, and then I'll start base coating and laying in my hairspray immediately on every single model. Now, I just do it intuitively. Even if I never really need the hairspray, if it's there and I need to chip it, I've got it. And so this is stuff that's really early. You might have a unit marking on here or a decal or two underneath as well. So get this. This is all very early work. And what I'm actually doing, the residual, I'll get to chat here in two seconds. I'm just trying to get that soft little, let's pull some, let's get some little like bleedy runoff stuff here. So like, wet the brush again. Let me see if you can even see if there's any, there's still almost no water on it. But you'll see it when it hits us, at least if I can get the light angle here. Hold on. Okay, you can just see that, there's, that's how much water is going down. Almost nothing. You see that right there? It's right in here. Okay, that's gonna work. It's it's working. It's working in a little bit. It's working in. It's working in. I can see the chip starting to happen a little bit. I'm keeping my brushwork even and consistent. Just kind of pushing that down a little bit. It's already starting to get probably almost too much for the type of look I'm after. So I'm I'm moving on now. Because what I'm trying not to do is I don't I don't really want to push this too hard in terms of. It starts to look like brush versus a natural chipping. And this comes from an intuition. This comes from experience a little bit. I'm poking that edge back up again to give a little bit more contrast now. Now that I've built in some wear and tear in here, let's build up a little more wear and tear up here to build more contrast. And I'm kind of actually pushing off the top of that edge. And it gives you those kind of scratchy little bristle marks. I'm almost, it's almost a stipple. But see, this is how natural hair, this is how natural whitewashes develop where they, they stay, 
in the hard to reach areas, it all happens on its own, so. That's actually coming up pretty good. Uh, Tony, you're good. Welcome. We're just getting rolling here on the on the heavy on the heavy lifting stuff. Uh, Justin, yeah, damp, damp, moist. All those words that nobody likes to talk about. Arms length, like in my yeah. I haven't. I'll, we'll spray hairspray. Yeah, we'll spray the hairspray in a minute. Sorry about that. Thanks for that reminder. Yeah, we'll go over that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, Justin, that's on me. Uh, the algorithm. I haven't really done a ton of work. Empty sprue. Watching these noon streams of my lunch is bad. <laughs> Call it, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be a, be a bad influence. Um, but yeah, the YouTube algorithm, once I get the, the SEO stuff locked in, Justin, it'll be a little bit easier. But it's also when you're a new channel, they do that on purpose, by the way. There's there's a lot of subtleties to YouTube I'm learning. You have to watch YouTube stuff to learn about YouTube. Um, yeah, Zell, we'll, 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 show you the, we'll show you the spray in here in a sec. I'm just kind of experimenting here a little bit. Yeah, right on the line, yeah, okay. Yeah, Zell, I'll give you I'll give you the full rundown when we spray the the Stug. Um, and and part of this was me having to move the demos along a little bit. So and plus I wanted to show some other stuff too. Prepping the airbrush part is a little bit less important on this stream because it's it's more important that I show you the whitewash. Okay, let's put a little bit more water on this other side. Let's just see what happens so we can we can see some stuff. So you can see see the water in that in there. So I'm a lot wetter, but I'm not like soaking, soaking wet. It's not dripping wet. Come on, light, catch that. There it goes. So that's a considerable amount of water. That's a lot of water. We're gonna have problems. We'll have problems, but we'll see what happens. Oh, now it's acting like the back of the turret. I think what I did was I had had the can, and I must have came across that corner pretty quick, which is why I recommend to. No, that's not doing. I was hoping to have a real shitty moment here, but it's not. Okay, so let's just let's let's get a little aggressive with this. See, when it fights you like this, where in other words nothing's really coming off, which is okay because it's more of an abrasive sanding with water idea. You can use that to good effect though, and you can see so right there. That little bright spot, that's actually the primer. So it cut through on the tip and you'll have to repaint that. That's typical repair work. I'm trying to scrub this down. This is how this one went on the back here. And that means there's almost no hairspray. When you see this happen, that means there's almost no hairspray on the surface, which is actually not a bad thing. <laughs> Cause that's actually looking, see I'm, I'm able to really control it though, even though I'm being a little bit scruffy. Down here, it just, it's like dry brushing with water. You're just hitting all these high spots. I was trying to get a real messy one for you guys. I'm going to show you what happens when it gets really bad, but oh well. I guess I do my job too well sometimes. I'm not sure how that was supposed to go. But see where the natural wear and tear is? The hot spots will get, will get popped off naturally because that's what happens in the real world. So I'm moving pretty quickly, but you can see all this. So you see all this little white, little yucky stuff. Just you can just dab that off. It's no big deal. A lot of lot, I was trying to get a real muddy, muddy kind of version where the white really blends with the with the with the green. But oops. so this is also stage one. What we'll do is we'll come back in and we'll start punching up some of this stuff, like I showed on the T34. So this is exactly how I did the T34 test piece. And you come back in with the second layer with the mapping. And then you can start doing some, you can actually spray some more white on that. In fact, why don't we do that? Why don't we do that? We'll do some of this. We'll do a second layer of hairspray. So Zal, you can see right up, cause Zal, you're probably one eye open half dead anyway. Dan says in the UK, British armor close up you know, on the Brit tank, a special kind of crappy look. Yeah, this is kind of an ugly color. I actually went with kind of a brighter poppy or NATO green. Um, cause my, my OD SSC 15 colors, I just wasn't trying to be super precise, but Hey, Forrest, how are you, buddy? Tony? Yep. Cool. True dude. Yep. Oh, okay. What will happen if you leave that white yucky on the dry? It just, it'll just dry as little white spots. Mike Skyers. Hey, welcome my friend. Got a lot of Toronto people here. Joe, welcome. Okay. 
Uh, Cake says, waiting that, that much is a bit risky, in my opinion. The hairspray dry pretty quickly. As far as I remember, the hairspray is similar. That's sort of out. Yeah, it depends on the brand a little bit. Um, so there's hairspray up on up on here. This is all was hairsprayed. And I, and I actually did that on purpose to kind of see what would happen. Uh, Mehmet, you know, just kind of messing around. So I get a lot of questions about how long and da-da-da-da-da. When I, what I recommend to you guys in particular, even though I know you can do it and prep it this way, what I recommend is if you're going to chip, if your intention is to chip, then don't let it sit around for a couple of weeks. Don't go through the process of painting it and then letting it sit around. You can get your base colors done, but if you want to chip with hairspray in particular, it's you're going to have a best result in the quicker amount of times, like within the first week. So even though, yes, it has the ability to chip for a while, I recommend your better results will come if you can plan that out a little bit. Like if you have a weekend coming up and you know you're going to have, you know, half the house, you know, half a day to yourself to do this stuff, then plan that moment to start really laying down the hairspray and then chipping during that day. Because you can go as quick as you want. I just waited just to, I was just messing around. I also got tired. <laughs> so I got to go to bed. Um, but yeah. So I just wiped, yeah. So Zal, what you're doing is, you know, you've got to be conscious of that stuff. Just, just make sure you go through and clean all that stuff up. Uh, how about scratches with the whitewash? Yeah, we'll do that, Gary. We'll, in fact, we'll, let's let's pop on. Let me hair dry this. She looks. <laughs> she looks pretty good. Not to brag, boys and girls. That's a cool look, and that you see on Allied vehicles quite a bit. You know, the the Russians and the stuff where it's, it looks like an older uh, whitewash. That's, that's actually come along pretty good. But let's put a second layer down and let's just see what happens. So let's use the four. We'll use this guy. It's a little stronger. Let's see if anything happens here. Make sure it works. <laughs> All right, Conan, remind me if you're in chat to switch camera views because I'm going to forget and we're going to be looking at my head. Okay, so to everybody recap. Are we good? Okay. This guy, where's this guy at? Get on camera. Okay. So kind of, you know, an arm's distance. Even passes. Let's put another coat over the whole thing. Okay. So let's switch camera views while I can remember. So now you can see that's, that's the, see how even that is? So I'm looking for the evenness. And I know some of you guys like this to do some weird special effects and stuff. You can do some other stuff if you want to spritz it down. There's some dust and stuff on there. I didn't bother to clean that up. Oh, it's okay, just a test piece. So I've got another, so now, so now on the green, there's two layers of hairspray now. This is the second one. On the white, there's only the one on top of the white. So let's put one more on this guy. Okay. Now I'm gonna dry it real good. This is the fun stuff. Okay. All right, so again, this is the number four, so it's probably a little bit more resistive. It's just for shits and giggles. Pull this guy up. Let's see, question, do you ever use white oil? Yeah, we'll get to that, Tony. We're gonna do some, uh, I use the white oils. Uh, you can use a number of different paints and we'll actually try to show a little bit different uh, techniques. So I've got, I had to find some white, some pure white. So we'll do some mapping with the OPR. Uh, let's see, oh, also my you gotta get the Midas touch. Gold, baby, it's gold. Yeah, waiting a few days result in a disaster multiple times. Okay, yeah, so there's probably the brand of, of hairspray you have. It probably has that quality to it. So you, you it's probably got a strong alcohol content Mehmet, and this is kind of, so to the question of the chipping fluid, one of the reasons I think, well, it is, I think the main reason uh, that they produce chipping fluids is that it's an even product across the board. So once you master chipping fluid, you could always rebuy it and reuse it and use the same, it's repeatable. So Cake, probably you've got uh, one of those type of, 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 of uh, on the body products that, that has probably a, a different content than this one does. Let me stir up my little white here real quick. So that's kind of the, that's one of the troubles with, with the international conversation with chipping is, or with the hairspray in particular, is the fact that there's different products around the world and I don't use them all, so I don't know all the differences between all of them. So we're gonna do some Tamiya with white. Um, 
me a white with water. I swear, guys. <sighs> okay, a little bit in here. And this one is, is I go by feel. It's the same idea where I, where I will mix this and go off of the, the visual look of how thin this is. And I'm just going to thin it with water. That hairspray is on there uh, drying pretty good. So I got a little bit of water. So I'm just kind of visually putting in about 20, 30% water just to see what happens. Do a quick little mix, always on the side of the cup. See how it runs, so it's a little bit thick, so we can add a little bit more water. I want it thinner than that. Eyedroppers are great, because you get a little bit more precision with, with the thinner part. Okay, it still feels a little thick. Yep, let's go a little bit more water and just working them slow. And this is a gloss paint too, so it'll be a little bit thicker by nature. There it goes. That's what I was looking for. There you go. Perfect. So that is mixing 101. Or thinning, I should say 101. So to me, a thin with water. To me, it has the ability to be thin with quite a few different products, as you guys know. But this is just for this purpose. I use water quite often. Um, so it's not a lacquer at this point in time. It's a water-based acrylic, basically, and for shits and giggles. Okay, question here is, yeah, so we're going to get to that, Tony. Yeah, multiple multiple layers of hairspray plus white peel result in a very pleasing white wash coat from a TV one. I guess we will go with, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we'll get to that here in a little bit. Uh, I'm sure you're going to miss that, that to me, a smell. Uh, you, get, you, you smell it. You get a little bit. Uh, you don't get the lacquer smell. Uh, hey, Plastic. Hey, Scott, what's up, buddy? We're doing well. Okay, if you're spraying, uh, say, Gundam legs, can you still use water to thin? Yes. Yes, yes, because this is really for a chipping purpose. Uh, you can spray Tamiya with water or their alcohol-based stuff. You know, you're pretty okay with that. I just personally don't use a lot of lacquer. I don't use any lacquers um, in terms of spraying. Okay, so this has been on here for a minute or two. So let's load up the brush. Let me swap my airbrush. So put it in. Put it in this guy. Like I said before, I do try to keep my chemical brand separate in the airbrush, even though this is a water-based. Okay. So we're gonna put a second layer of whitewash down. Get out of the camera's angle here. I'm gonna go a little bit more opaque and kind of random. This is the Tamiya Gloss Way. Let's throw some of this. The beauty of whitewash, one of the fun parts about whitewash, it does not have to be precise in any way, shape, or form. I mean, you can get really precise if you need to. It's basically like a post-shading idea. You know, you're just kind of slapping it down. I don't even really care too much. Okay. Uh, what am I doing? Oh, this guy. I knew it. Okay. So that's, to me, a white down on top of the hairspray. And we'll see what happens. That's now two layers of hairspray underneath. Let's give you guys a good idea. I'll try to hustle here. I think I'm taking my time too much today. <laughs> Got maybe time. Yeah, the key part of all that, because Mehmet, I know you test a lot, is, is really just practice this stuff, and that's what you're talking about, is you're really kind of getting your feet wet. So a lot of times, too, though, I do try to emphasize, do this stuff on the scrap model, not on your real projects. If you're new to it, or you know, you have variables that are acting differently than what I'm showing. So with the Tamiya, it kicks off a little bit faster than, than say, the Vallejo, I will, let me repeat again because it is important information because we don't talk, I haven't talked about them a lot, but Vallejo Life Color Mission, they all kind of have that early 15, 20, 30 minute window of that erasability where they're just starting to kick off in their cure window. And that's a natural chemical drying process for them. Uh, use it to your advantage. I know in the past, if you're not careful, you get those muddier conditions because it's, it's too much paints coming off too fast. Um, and then some of the, the Gunzi Tamiyas, they do dry a, a little bit on the snap. They're a little bit different type of chemical. So uh, they're mostly, um, a lot of those are plastic basic information models, but anyway. Um, yeah, you guys are good. All right. Okay. Oh, cracked. Look at that. There you go. Okay. So what happened here was too wet with water, too much 
on the on the hairspray underneath. And you guys have written me, but I was trying to crack that wood the other day. <laughs> Couldn't get it to do. So there's a crack moment. So we've got a juicy amount of hairspray. Actually, I forgot to dry that off. Let's try that. So when you see that, that means there's too much hairspray underneath. And, the, and because I've thinned it with water, the water in the paint is activating that hair. Uh, but you can see where I was, I was thinner up top. I didn't have any cracking, but right in here where I get kind of an opaque, heavy duty, there's a lot of water in that moment. And it just activated the hairspray because I was probably too close to the model, not paying enough attention to what I'm doing. So let's see what happens with the layer two. happen so let's add a little bit more water so with the Tamiya process what you notice or will notice is that it, it's, it doesn't work it doesn't work and all of a sudden it starts to work which is what you can see it doing right there so clearly I wasn't worried about the crack paint because I know I can come back in and do some other stuff So say this was a tank that had been in action for a while and they added a second coat on top. This is probably what you guys wanted to see. You probably like all this kind of stuff. So there's actually the, the you can, you, maybe not in the camera because the, the, the glare, you still see the lower layer of hairspray underneath. And I didn't seal, you know, you guys asked me, do you seal in between? Nah, I don't care. We're getting, whatever effects we get out of this is what I, was what we're going to use you get some really cool kind of looks you can see how with this with the proper layer level of hairspray now you can see some of the little stuff that how this goes So I'm just working my way around the details. The natural high spots tend to, oh, let me get a scratch in there for you. I know you guys asked about that. Let me scratch this bad boy up. Okay. So for the scratch, um, I'll use my favorite, the Tamiya stir stick, the round end, the spoon end. So try to hold it steady. Make sure I've got a good, I'm not gonna be impeded here. I try to do a one and done. Cause that's too big, but any more than that, you're gonna mess it up. So just kind of come back and I can work that in a little bit. There we go. Kind of killed it there a little bit, which is what I wanted. It looked a little too abrupt, but over here is nicer. So I kind of just played with it over here a little bit. But you can see how the crack paint is no big deal. <laughs> like this, the, you guys, you know, if you're worried about it, if it happens like the, all over the whole thing, then that's that's just that's probably a different scenario. Too much of everything. And, it, and usually what you could do is you could almost just basically wipe most of it away. That's that is kind of the nicer little part of this process. If you do have any kind of whoops, my turret's coming off the tape. Push it down. There. So, so here I'm just I'm actually pushing down and, and see the effect I'm getting with that. I get kind of that that little poppy peel look to it. This is coming out quite nice, actually. This is a keeper, boys. This is a keeper. I may not let you guys have this one. See how there, there's a slight, the way the structure of the vehicle goes, it's really hard to get a chip right there. That means it's probably really hard to get a chip in real life right there. So don't always force it if you, you know, don't try to, don't try to force the chips. Let the brush kind of naturally do its thing. Just getting little, tiny, little. Never have too small of a chip, my friends. God, thank God this is going well. <laughs> oh, I love it. I do stress out. I'm like, oh, I'm going to F this whole thing up. Okay, 
Let's zoom out a little bit here. And let's do this guy up here. So this is uh, green, two layers of hairspray, an old layer and then a fresh new one, and then the Tamiya white sprayed well. And you can see how it's a gloss paint, how it's not like really glossy glossy. Like I didn't spray it uh, to, to get a gloss out of it. But you get kind of a nice opacity with it. So I got a little bit of the, the, the faded mission models back in here, kind of coming around, coming in here, a little bit maybe more of a of opaque fresh coat that kind of matches this side over here. Oh, I meant to spray some, do I still have that? Okay, I meant to spray some more over there. Okay, so same thing. First time on the surface, check my brush. Still feels good. A little bit of water in there, not too much. You can hear me scrubbing. So when I start to get some, when I start to get some wear and tear like that, I know it's it's actually going pretty well. So now I slow down a little bit. So now I just kiss, I kiss some of that. I get those right there. I could probably start moving on. That's a real nice look. I'm trying to get the front edge over here a little bit more, like it was brushed this way. So there's just the right amount of water on here right now to kind of get something going. Whoops, sorry. Trying to go in the direction of travel, direction of how the, the, the crew would slide or sit on this thing. Just gently, put, you can see I'm getting some really fine little chips and scratches right there. These are really nice. Like these are very, very usable. I would, I would be really happy with this on a real project. Let's get the top of this uh, visor cover. I'll get to chat in two seconds. I know you guys are probably like, everybody's got the popcorn out right now, right? <laughs> okay, yeah, we're getting in the groove again. We're getting in the groove. Let's pull some, we'll pull some map in here on us. Oops, get on screen, boy. Notice I'm trying to stay in a kind of a vertical motion of the slope off the front of the turret. I'm not trying to get super crazy because the chips are going really nicely. So that's again, two layers of hairspray and a thin coat of whitewash. This is usually what happens. This is my normal, when I, when I see this kind of stuff, that means I've done my job right in terms of, you know, being a scale modeler. Kind of stippling in that, that crack in there. So that shape's probably not, this is where it starts, this is what I'm talking about. That's not as nice. So I've got to kind of work with this a little bit. That's a little bit, looks a little clumsy right now, a little bit forced. And that's a subtle kind of position on that one. Maybe personal analysis, I didn't really want it to get that. So let's work up in this opaque area here a little bit. So what happens is probably, there's obviously more paint here. I can see how opaque that is. So it's gonna be a little bit more resistive. So I'm gonna gently work this area to kind of bring, in, bring this big chip in line up here. Just get a little bit more of a blended in. So I'm slightly poking and prodding around. See how that's starting to, to diffuse up in there? So that's taking that kind of heavily chipped area. I didn't quite like it, but kind of fixing it and working with it. That hopefully makes some sense to you guys. And then kind of see, there we go. Now, now, it's, now I've brought it back in line with the rest of these. So if, if what I'm doing is I'm bumping the contrast up a little bit more on these guys over here to kind of balance visually what happened over here. That's one way you kind of, you have to maneuver yourself a little bit to get those. Okay. So what do we got here? What are you guys talking about? Uh, uh, hey man, what's up? You guys are saying hello. <laughs> Leave it, yep, I do. I, happy, it's, it's the Bob Ross. So Mike Weiss asked, Mike, is there a difference between the X28? Okay, so with the, um, the paints that can use multiple thinners, like with the mission models, I just stick with their stuff. It's just a simple system. Same with Vallejo and in, in Life Color, I basically just use water all the time. Uh, but with the Tamiya's and the acrylic lacquers, I'm, I'm guessing real colors and some of the other ones probably work similar way. I know they can use different. The weaker the thinner, the usually the easier time you have with the chipping. The stronger you go up in the thinner conversation to an alcohol uh, and into a lacquer, you know, as you thin these up higher, that resistance gets way, way more and the cure time snaps even faster, faster, faster. So these paints, the way the, the, the acrylic lacquers work with Gunzi and Tamiya in particular, and I'm guessing the AKs too. Um, I've never really used them because I stopped kind of using lacquer, so I wasn't going to go out and buy them. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Yeah, I got enough paint. Cool. So let's go over here and let's do something a little bit. Hopefully that answered that. But yeah, it's the stronger you go up and the thinner, the, the, the harder it gets. Same with enamels too. Enamels kick off when they, when they cure, it gets real hard. Because remember, the goal here is just a quick refresh. You want the water to, to punch under the, the top to, to lift the hairspray off, which is what causes the chips. You're not, you're not dissolving the top, if that makes sense. You're not dissolving the paint, usually, most of the time. 
Oh, you guys are sharing it. Oh, how cute. You're sharing Instagrams. You're going to share numbers pretty soon. I know it. Uh, Brian Matthews, I suppose, of course, are Yeah, so I have, let's switch brushes here. Let's, let's see what happens when we do a little bit different brush. Switch up brushes. Yeah, I tend to have, uh, let's see, here's, we got this guy too. This is a, a vampire spear. Apparently, I was going to do some things to somebody. Actually, I took a, I took a, a sushi. I cut it and then I put it in the pencil sharpener. <laughs> so anyway. So say you just want to do some really precise type chipping. This is a really nice way to do too. I know the the wood though can be sometimes a little, it tears the surface sometimes. So I'm just letting it skip across a little bit. Just give me kind of a natural, I can probably put a little bit, let me see here. So you can use a lot of different things. This There's no hard or fast rules to, to most of this stuff. I'm just putting a little bit of water down. So there's 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 kind of a different bristle. See how quickly I got those really, really nice, fine little marks in there? This is all hairspray. This is this is the beauty. To do this with a sponge or hand paint this? Yeah, yeah, I'm done. I'm not doing that anymore. Get a real nice look on that hot spot there. Just kind of, kind of working until you see some chips happening in this section here. The brush is basically almost dry. There's almost no water on the surface. So you can see a lot of times, I think many of the times you guys struggle with this, it's probably too wet. You've got too much water going down. So I'm just getting some really nice subtle little things. Let's do some stuff on the, on the edges of the hatches here. So now when you want something real specific, just a little bit of water on there, work it real slow. I'm kind of jiggling it, jiggly, jiggly, jiggly. Just kind of seeing what happens. Wait until I get that first chip to come up. That's my goal right now is I'm not in a hurry. It's a beautiful Wednesday afternoon. Got nothing better to do but chip some whitewash. See, I'm starting to get some, some whoops, sorry, it's coming off. Just getting a couple early ones. So I'm kind of working that edge a little bit real slow. I want a subtle wear and tear because this is basically from hands a lot. You know, there's going to there's gonna be a few times the soldiers are actually walking around in the close hatches per se almost. So I try to imagine this is, is this is an open hatch mostly. And so this is going to be the crew member grabbing the lip with his hands, kind of a thing and wearing that paint down. Now, one thing, because I just said that, I actually don't really like that to be a harder edge chip. One of the things I do enjoy about the mission, I actually would rather have this kind of a look where it's kind of a soft sanded wear versus the fingers causing hard edge chips. So there is a little bit of that subtle difference between the paints and, and how they tend to work a little bit. And that's why I said before, I think the mission gives you a little bit more of an, of an envelope of opportunity, if you will. Like the Tamiya works, this is kind of how Tamiya works. It looks like this almost all the time, which is not bad. But the mission models does a lot of this stuff too, where, okay, now I'm getting some other types of effects. So I guess I shouldn't say in, in absolutism, one isn't the other, like play with them all really. And I have all of them available. I have whites from other stuff too, uh, cause you get different looks from them. And so trying to, trying to work through certain things. I don't think I've talked about the, the Windex thingy, the, that thing, I haven't done that. That's a little bit more of a sanding with the chemical. So we're getting, yeah, I wasn't paying attention. I'm getting some big chips on the hatch now. So that's probably a little bit too much on the hatch. So now I'm just trying to work the rest of it up a little bit. Give me something. Give me something good. Okay, now we probably know that the edge of the, ch the, the hatch right here, so let's get some water in this specific area first. Get this going. Actually, that's probably the wrong brush for that. This is why you have a few different ones, because you're gonna you're gonna fight the shape a little bit. There we go. A little bit of a circular motion. I can probably, because this is a little bit strong, I can probably go a little bit heavy over here now. And that's what I do, is I kind of evaluate what some of the chips are doing. And you kind of have to work with what you get a little bit, if that makes sense, because now I'm trying to like draw the story on top of this turret. Let's get some of these, scrub some of these little doohickeys. Jimmy Jams, gotta get your Jimmy Jams. 
You know that t-shirt's coming, right? <laughs> oh, man. How are you guys doing today? Everybody good? I'm in a good mood because this is going really well. <laughs> it's beautiful. I would use this like this, even though it's a demo, like this is this is this quality of work here, I would actually be happy to keep this and, and use this. So we'll we'll go through this here a few more. Let me get a little bit on the barrel, and then we'll throw some um, some mapping down, and then we'll switch to the Stug. I'm just gonna get a little bit aggressive with this. Let's see what happens. So this is where you can kind of see it's too much water. It's coming up too much and it's coming up uncontrollably. So this is kind of a Tamiya fail. See how it's just basically wiping it all off. I'm not getting any like really good like chip chips. So now you got to work with it because you don't have a lot of options other than just trying to wipe most of it. Actually, no, there it goes. Now it starts to look, now it starts to look okay. And this is kind of normal chipping speed. Okay. That probably matched okay with, with the, um, the side of the turret. I don't know how that's going. So as you rotate up and over, that's where you're getting kind of a, a look there. Probably need a little more chips up in here. Hold on one second. Get a little bit more aggressive and but we're gonna show some things here that, that'll show how we tie this, and I'm not gonna chip the rest of this too much. I'm gonna run out of time, I'm gonna keep going in this. We got some other stuff to talk about. Been around the block a few times, literally. And that comes from you know studying those those urban combat photos. You know, is there is there rolling through in the winter? You know, there's a lot of urban combat, heavy combat use, stuff like that. Uh, we'll do some mapping here in a sec. <laughs> we need Jimmy Jam challenge coins. <laughs> the whole thing, It'd be the Jimmy Jam show. Mike's in the zone. Yeah, sorry guys, I get in the zone a little bit. <laughs> but hopefully, is that is that hitting you guys? Is this we doing okay? Greets from Poland. Hello, Carol. How are you, buddy? Okay, the video's a keeper, Mike, these are those. Okay, cool, thank you, Scott. You are my biggest fan. When is, hey, Scott, when is that, uh, when's the anniversary show popping, by the way? So we'll, we'll, we'll throw a little uh, love your back your way. We'll do a little promo. Uh, video's a keeper, okay. Yeah, this is some good chipping. We'll do some mapping here in a sec. Most people here probably don't know this, but the scenery building behind Mike is entirely happy. <laughs> that is the beautiful downtown Portland. Uh, MP fades for me when shipping, but I find smaller and refined ships between us. Something I've been meaning to pick your brain. Yeah, so what you're seeing, Joshua, with that is, is so one is an organic water-based chemical system, and one is a plastic pigment acrylic lacquer. And so you're going to get it, and Vallejo is a vinyl acrylic, Life Color is a latex acrylic. In fact, I think I got those right. And then the AK older stuff, uh, originals one and two, I think, are, are like a latex. I don't know what their third gen is. It's probably similar to like emission stuff. I believe that's what I was I heard about. The organic stuff, the thing, the beauty I like about the mission stuff is the pigment grind is so fine, Josh. Um, and we'll do some stuff. I'll try to get a little bit more of a dramatic chipping with the mission on the Stug. Uh, we'll spray some there in that. Again, this was this was an insignia white with the with the pure white over it. I don't know how it comes up on camera. You're getting a little bit of variation in the kind of the whites. I don't like to use the pure whites too much, and that's yes, last night's. And this guy here. So you can you can see what a pure white looks like. And then you've got kind of the layered whites up a little bit. You get a little bit of a dirty white in there. Uh, we'll do some filters. We'll do some other stuff too here in two seconds. Just want to get through all your stuff here. 
Get a little parts. I got to drink some water. Well, what is the difference between Tinker One and Four? Notice they're both German. Yeah. So James Lynn, the way I break my books down is by camo schemes. So German armor is huge, big part of the deal. They make a lot of different stuff. These dudes painted the shit out of everything. Uh, the, what I try to do is uh, each book contains kind of like there's there's a gray tiger, uh, there's a desert Africa or, desert Africa core Panzer IV, uh, there's there's a chip half track. They all have kind of different paint schemes. And when you shift to Tank Art Four, you're seeing a three tone Zimmerant with whitewash. You're seeing a whole bunch of whitewash, a whole chapter in whitewash. Um, so it's broken down by the vehicles that are inside and the types of camouflage I'm showing. Uh, and that way, because it was either do I do gray tanks or green tanks or you know tigers or whatever you can break it down in many ways what i find uh, just from my time in the hobby this kind of is a little bit more of an interesting breakup um keeps the the thing going a little bit more better flow uh helps for me too in other words i'm not doing a whole book on just green shermans like which would drive me nuts you know i like doing one and then moving to something else that's kind of how i'm wired uh it's just open on the side of this me kit we'll just, okay so what do we do i miss oh you guys are so good yeah yeah, it's painted by Bravo. Yeah, happy accidents and stuff. And that's hairspray chipping, you know, happy accidents. There's a lot of cool stuff going on there. That actually looks pretty solid. We'll do some stuff in a second. Um, but anything else? Did I miss any other questions? I uh, forgot my whitewash martyr with me and then with Gunzi level thing. Yeah, you guys can do all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, I avoid using, like I said, I've, I've tried not to use lacquer thinners with my hairspray chipping in particular, just because it's so resistive. You tend to fight it a lot if you do it wrong. Yeah, cool. Okay, you guys are getting the right stuff. Okay, sweet. Um, yeah, so Wayne, great, great question. Excellent point, excellent point, thank you. I meant to mention that. If it goes wrong, if it starts to go wrong, um, and I've said this in, in the first few streams, the best thing you can do is stop and back off. Just let it go. If it's a water situation, yeah, pop that with the hair dryer, evaporate most of it out, and don't touch the surface until it, it you know, even honestly, sometimes you have to like walk away. <laughs> Not that you're mad, but you have to give a little bit of time just to let it cook for a minute, let it go, let the paint cure a little bit and toughen back up. And then come back to it and, and also you come back a little bit fresh and you know having having you know bumped into something like that so it's really smart play wayne the best thing to do is to dry it back it off and redo it um so yeah somebody wanted my alpha shirt there you go i got a little text right <laughs> uh, but yeah anyway that's kind of um let's see here james asks blast arrows thanks guys i just ordered yeah sweet appreciate that getting some love Yes, books, uh, the pre-orders, we're letting them roll a little bit longer through August. Um, quick brief on the shipping. Printing is actually going quite well now. They said they're in the groove, they said, so they're getting kind of going with the, I think the first three are almost done, so uh, they're rolling into the second two of the first five, and then we're still on schedule for the second group of printing in the fall, so everything's kind of going okay, even though we did get the mass updates and stuff, so I am kind of just expecting the worst. <laughs> Expect it not to go super smooth, but we're going okay on the books printing right now. We're doing pretty good. Uh, I did send the newsletter out. I think some of you guys, if you're not on the on the newsletter for the RSP website, there's a sign-ups at the very bottom. Just scroll. All, it's a one-page site, basically. So just scroll to the bottom. You'll see the little contact sign-up thing. Uh, I usually, I don't have my website where, like, you know, you're on the site for three seconds. It's like, sign up now. I don't, I hate, it drives me nuts. So I don't do that. Um, yeah, don't. That is, that is the end game, my friend. There's a master plan. Okay, we're good. Everybody good? Uh, mapping. Let's do a little bit of mapping, and then we'll do the Stuck. We'll switch gears. We'll go to German. Let's do. We'll spend about 10-15 minutes on this. I'm gonna not super wet paper towel. Actually, this one's better. I want a colored paper towel. The super the supermarket only had white paper towels this time. I'm finding I like the brown paper towels because I can see what, especially when I do whites, I, I can see what's going on. So the OPR palette from Sunday. I threw down some extra white this morning. Real quickie. Kind of brush here, I need some thinner. So because this is an acrylic paint job on the whitewash part on the turret, the beauty of this process, and the reason I, I, I think for many of us, traditionally speaking, um, with the acrylic base coats in particular, you can move forward with the weathering processes with the other solvent-based chemicals quite fast. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, I'm talking too much. I'm chatty today. Had too much coffee this morning. So you can move really quickly if you want to. So I've just got a little bit of thinner. I'm not gonna tape anything down for this. I'm not gonna get heavy, you know, dirt and wear and tear. But we'll use a few colors here and, and we'll get some stuff going here. Let me get one more color brush for that. I need some blender brush. Okay. Get this guy. 
So I've got some, some clean oil paint brushes. Let's put them in the thinner first, get them prepped and ready to go. We're just gonna do some mapping with the white. And mapping, as I've said before, is basically, think like a topographical map. Hey Jeff, how are you, bud? Let's see here. Zoom, zoom. Okay, so mapping, the, 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 to recap this technique now. So now you've moved on. Now you've got the model chipped. I would do the whole thing. It doesn't look super good on screen. See all the stuff up in here? And eh, you're like, okay, whatever. And then this here's kind of plain Jane. So with the mapping, what you have is you have these kind of really cool little, like a topographical map. You have this whole little outline of stuff for you. So you come back in and you start bumping up the opacity in kind of a relative shape that's already there, and, but you don't cover the whole thing. So you leave some stuff uh, of viewable, very much like this. This is exactly what it looks like. This is kind of what it should be looking like when you're done, where you get kind of this, this second layer of opacity around the overall shape. Like you can just see the old white in here that whole thing is kind of a greenish older white and then you've come back in and you've layered it up. That's kind of what mapping does. It gives you that depth. Let me just show my finger in pigments. <clears throat> I could feel it like, ooh, <laughs> like squished a bug. I feel the, the pigments crush under the weight in my hands. Okay, do I need my eyeballs? Do I need Tankard 3? Yeah, you do. You all need the books. Get the books, just buy the books. Uh, yeah. No, happy, oh, oh, by the way, on the website, um, contents. Each book, uh, tank arts in particular, I list out uh, what models are inside. So you can quickly reference one or four or whatever. Like if you're looking for something specific, you can see what they are. And then there should be enough photos to kind of uh, to kind of flip through and whatever. And you can always email me, guys. You're always welcome to email me. I love talking to you guys. Okay, let's do this. Okay, we're going to get a little white oil. In this case, is actually Wilder's. It's the only white I have left. I have to buy a new tube of white. So I'm just, I'm just letting you zoom over here. So I'm just mixing. As you recall, every time you just kind of get the oil to flow. Unload. But I want a little bit of a wet application with this. So I want it to flow a little bit. So I get a little more thinner. I'm just gonna start over here. Just stipple tab this, just kind of around the shapes. I'm not being super precise or crazy. I don't really care too much. This is just getting a general second coat of white on. This is my little, my favorite little stipple brush. Look at you guys. Thank you, Clinton. You're very nice. Okay, so this is a dry stipple brush here. There's already, th because there's thinner in the paint. So let's just kind of stipple this out a little bit. Because I've got that, see I've got that scratch there. I'm using that scratch, a little bit of a border. So I'm just trying to knock off that sharper edge of that kind of cloudy mix. So now we got a little bit, see how we're getting just a little bit more opacity on the lower edges of the thing. I'm gonna switch to my rake real quick. Let's get a little vertical streaking in here. So I've just got a clean rake with a little bit of, of, of thinner on it and it's gonna come through. And just pull through a little bit of that. It's gonna streak it a little bit. Come back in with some more white oil. More pure paint this time. Let's start drawing some effects. I want more paint than that. Okay. So I'm being a little bit more precise now. Coming back up in here, pull some of this down. So run some of that white, that white will bleed off. Let's add. Let's let's bump the opacity in the in the in the front of the of the um, the turret plate in here. I don't think that's the mantlet. Eh, no, because it's part of the turret. The mantlet's kind of been there. Do you guys ever have that when you're writing these stories? I don't know if you guys ever do have this. The computer doesn't know what the word mantlet is or a sponson. I'm like, dude, are you not an armor modeler? <laughs> like spell check is like, I don't know what that word is. I'm like, all right, just go build a model. That happens all the time. So I'm just trying to bump up the opacity in here. Let's get a little bit more paint going here. It's an old tube of white paint, so there's not much oil, uh, linseed oil left. There we go. There we go. 
And that's what it is with the oils. You just keep working it a little bit on the brush until you get the look here. I want a little bit more opaque white in here. And we're going to come back up and clean this up in a second. Let's put a little bit of pop of this. I can go a little bit heavy handed with this. See that it looks a little bit poopy? That's okay. We're going to clean that up nicely. So this is, a, this is the thing a lot of you guys like to do uh, when you have something like a scratch like this. Let me clean some, cleaning the scratch out a little bit, a little bit white in there. What you're trying to do here in particular is I want just the edge of that scratch, the lower edge, to catch the light. It's a very popular little technique to do. See how I'm just kind of working the oil with a clean blender brush? And I'll kind of pop that ledge up a little bit. It's a little strong, so I can come back in and start cleaning it back out, pulling some of it out. And it's a rake, so I can rotate it sideways to get different effects. And this is just the white layer. We'll come back in with some greens and some other stuff too, real quick. Come back over here to this guy. Let's clean this up a little bit. This is the beauty of oils right here. Just kind of stipple Jimmy Jam his little thing in there a little bit. Just softly the back edge of that right in there, keeping that kind of tucked white in there. And we'll hit the hair dryer in a sec. Just kind of get a little bit of streaky. And see how you get kind of that chalky kind of patchiness? That's kind of mimics the distempered paints, which is why I like this so much. Clean some of that scratch up here a little bit. A little too much white back up into that scratch. So you just come back in real carefully, kind of above the scratch now. Just kind of push down into it to kind of get that green stripe going a little bit. Okay, there we go. So you can see how I've kind of cut that scratch back down visually, but you still have it. You still have a little bit of that, that high spot edge. There you go, a little bump in there. These, uh, and these King Art brushes, just to remind you guys, these are the replacement for the lower Cornells. Oops, what? Bumble. So King Art, I've got the description of all these brushes um, below each of the last couple of videos and I'll add them tomorrow when I read, when I update this video. So I'll, I'll always put the updates in for the, the next day. I might do it tonight though, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So let's dry some of this off now. Now let's do a second layer of speckles you can also speckle this stuff in. So we get a little bit wetter on the oils here. Just a little bit of the white, let me take off there. So I got my little tweezers here. I'll set this guy down here. So just like a lot of other stuff, the speckling gives you that kind of, let me test it out on the paper towel. Let's see what I can get a little wet here. Get some... There we go, okay. Okay, so we're good. Flick some of this down here. Just speckling some white oils into this. So this is what I talk about layering and building up opacities. Oops, the turret's gone off. <laughs> these are fun too. Okay, we're still on there, okay. And then we'll switch to some darker tones. So again, I'm working light to dark, so I'm using the white to my advantage right now. precise blend on this one. So I've got a really nice, sharp, clean blender. So we come back into some of those, actually here, let's pop some of those up here real quick. I'll get to chat in two seconds. I'm in the zone, boys, in the zone. Okay, let's get some pure oil. So the speckles add a little randomness to it. Kind of like the rush tipping the other day, same idea. Pop some of these up a little bit, just the lower edges of them. So now I've gone swap to the blending brush again. It's got a hair smidge of thinner on it. So now I just pull some of these down, just like the rush streaks. It's basically the same idea. And you can see the white oil paint's a little chalky. 
And that's the natural nature of white pigments and oils. They're a little bit on the chalkier side. They don't blend out as smoothly as some of the other colors do. Slowly starting to make this surface come alive. Gonna start drawing some pure ones on. Okay, I'll pop my head up in two seconds here and clean some of these up a little bit. And these can be a little sloppy because if you if you look at some of the way those those bleed out in real life, they tend to be a little bit on the less pretty side. They don't you don't get really nice super fine white streaks too much. And then we'll switch to a green here in, in a sec though. So now we're starting to add some life to this. Soften that up a little bit. So I'm playing with the mapping, the opacity, so I've kind of building the, the, the opacity up down low. It's actually quite subtle. A little bit more of a, it's a less in your face kind of look. Some of these are popping on screen a little bit strong, that's okay. Oh, let's see here, auto correct is similar, not a model. Um, uh, do you back off the weathering over a whitewash, a bit of fear of looking over? So with the whitewash in particular, Marino, and, and I think you're going with that is, is you have to kind of set the timing of the winter that you're in, in terms of, is it December? Is it the full blown Northern winter where there's, the mud is completely frozen, or the earth is frozen, the water and the earth is frozen, so you're not gonna get a muddy situation versus the spring thaw, like in January, February into March. Uh, and it gets muddier as that, as that earth starts to, to defrost a bit and then you get the more of the tossed up muddy look. You kind of use your references and kind of pick your battles with that. Because some models actually, they don't get dirty at all almost. The white is, you know, this. there's not going to be a ton of dirt up on this model per se. I might do a little bit of rusting and green just to kind of push the emphasis and then maybe some dirt down low for, for visual interest. So you kind of go back and forth with that. Yeah, we're doing great, Jeff, <laughs> to answer your question. <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys are good, okay. Um, let's see, World War One would be great. Yeah, I, I plan on doing World War One in the future, for sure. Uh, you know, the same Tank Art books, part five, six, seven. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I think you're talking years in advance, my friend. Uh, I do have to get to other subsidies. There will be a Tank Art 5, they're all planned already, um, but there are also, uh, you know, the Gundam and the aircraft stuff for the big books, and then there's obviously new SM books. So next, the next Tank Art's probably a little ways away in terms of actual production. Um, some projects are kind of along a little bit where I've got them mapped out, um, but I haven't really dived into a Tank Art 5 yet. So I need, because it's just because I have to get to the other stuff. Um, yeah, so Carol asks, uh, when you work on OPR in sections, does it mean panels do one that continue? To, yes, exactly. So I try to break up the natural breakup of the model. Like if you remember the last stream, it's a little robot. And so the arms make a section themselves and the legs are a section, the body kind of split in two. Um, and then this one here, like it's just this section here is what I'm talking about. I'm not even, as you can tell, I'm not even worried about this one. Um, just go through over here and then segue to the green. Let me cut some of those up here. So let's put a little bit more life into the green. Let me see if I can get some of this oil to work a little bit. It's my older palette from the other day. That's the blender. To my mouth. Okay. So let me get some of the green going here. Put the model back. Okay. Yeah. Get some green going. That's black. So I'm get kind of an olive. I'm gonna get kind of an olive the green shade on my brush here. trying to do is towards the top edge of that turret now just kind of work in see how it's already got a subtle shift to the green up there 
So just gonna, I'm gonna go a little bit on the darker green up here. So my palette's pushing, that's why I tape it down. It's like pushing off screen. Okay, so I've got my dark green here. You can see, that's what I'm using. Just zoom in, you can see real quick. So I've kind of had to wet these oils. Got a dark green, I've got a, a grassy green and olive and the really dark OD olive here and that's actually You have to re-wet it, re -wet it, reset it, wipe it back off, get it almost dry again. Excuse me. Got the hiccups there. Just dip in this little section here. Kind of pulling that down into the white a little bit. Let's see if we can switch our brushes here. Gives a little bit of a natural filter to the white. And while we're doing that, let's uh, pull some of that green out of there. And clean this brush up a little bit. I probably have a brown brush or something handy. Switch colors here, get kind of a, a brownish, uh, earthy tone here. Actually, they're drying up pretty good. This palette's at the end of its useful life, so I'd make a new palette normally, but I didn't feel like making a new palette today. Okay. Just trying to just age this a little bit. So even right over the old white, no big deal. So 
So now I've started to age this a little bit. So this is why I like to work light to dark. See how delicate I'm being with the brush? So I think in a video years ago, I talk about with a, I think it was a KB1 Ekranami, Ekranani, I don't know how you say that. The one with all the bolts on the side, very similar to the Cromwell. In that uh, Hornet Hobby video, I talk about, you know, why you do these kind of a little bit more precise fin wash applications. This is because I can do this kind of stuff with it. You can see I just, I just added just a kiss of dirt under that bolt. It doesn't knock you over. It's not super strong. It's right to the old white streak. Nothing muddy about it. And that's it. And this one down here came out pretty good too. So say we want to go a little bit heavier with this front one. Kind of a dirty rust color. I'm not really trying to rust the bolts per se, but just kind of the runoff, if you will. Collection and then runoff. So I'm just going to try to... I've added that in there. Now I come back in with the blender real quick. It's so almost no thinner on that. Just trying to pull that down. This is a little bit stronger. Soften that up a little bit. There we go. There we go. Nice, nice, nice. There we go. Okay. So I've already started to get kind of a distempered kind of a greeny white kind of a age look up in here. A little bit of a filtery effect over here. A little bit of just a just a hint of a dirt collection on this ledge. Not too much though, because it'll just quickly overwhelm it. I'm trying to be a little bit more, less muddy winter. So that's that's fun, fun, love stuff like that. <laughs> Good times. Okay, uh, you sound funny talking with a brush. <laughs> I know, sorry, Zell. Yeah. Usually when I do this, there's three or four brushes in my hands. There's, there's always one in the mouth and, and I have to remember that I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> Yeah, Joshua, this is I, I'm, this is why I'm spending so much time on these videos with, with the oil paints because I think I really feel this is the better way now to illustrate its true powers. It is it is the, the Thanos of the of the universe. We were putting all the infinity stones out there, my friends, with the OPR. Say that though is, is a little bit too stark now. You can come back in with the white. Actually, here you can actually if you wanted to, because you're just a baller. Can okay, get a little thinner on this guy. Let's see if I get some white on this guy. This white paint is so dried out. It's an old tube of Wilder that has like no linseed oil. So say you did a little sponge here with the oils. You can come back in here. Also do this right over the old stuff. And then come back with the blender. So I'm just trying to add a little bit, maybe another layer of stuff, just different things you can do. Pull them right through the, some of the green too and everything else. It looks a little sharper on, on camera because it picks up that white highlight. The camera just adjusts for the white. And just some other little things you can do. Kind of stipple that out a little bit. And you can actually come back in. The other little trick everybody loves to do too. Similar to the scratch. Oh, I should put some rust in that scratch a little bit too. Get some white on it. Come on, baby. Get on there. This white is really fighting me. It's almost bone dry. There's almost... White gets really like chalky pasty when it dries out. It, it doesn't flow very well with the oil paints. It's fighting a little bit. No big deal. Come in here. Just kind of... Just, I'm just really subtly punching up some of these little upper upper parts of the chipped edges a little bit. 
bit more thinner on that, a little bit more flow. I don't want to make a mess, so I'm putting almost no thinner down. It's almost pure paint. A fresh tube of white would go a little bit easier. So I am fighting that a little bit, but that's, that's the experience telling me that it's fighting me a little bit. It's ready for a new tube of paint. So this is where you can see when you go from the first few steps of the whitewash to really starting to layer it in, develop it out. I could do this all day. <laughs> I have to stop. I have to move on. Okay. I was having some fun there. Oh, yeah, Horner Hobbies, good days. Books are good, but a good video won't make the books. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm really trying to do is connect these dots. Really, really give you guys a visual a visual bridge. Okay, let's do the Stug. The Stugo. Let's switch gears here. This guy over here. Come some. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's actually coming out kind of nice. All these little different effects on there. And I didn't notice any difference between the hairspray, so whatever. <laughs> Call me a liar. I think I sprayed it pretty good though. I was, I was doing some stuff with that where I think I sprayed it pretty nicely done. So we're gonna switch to the Stug now. That's okay, I, this, this looks a little better. You can see how much work this is. See, this is gonna take a little bit more work now to get up. So now to the section carol and all this stuff. So what I'm doing is I've got this pretty far along. I can move it over to here and then I can rotate up here by using this as kind of my reference guide of what I need to do to, to make it kind of all fit in together. I didn't hit that scratch again like I wanted to, but it's okay. We can always keep going with this stuff too. And again, I would always, again, to the workflow conversation, get all this done, get this all going before you load this up with stowage and gear and some other stuff. You'll have a much better time. Sorry, is that what did you ask? Use sponge shipping to touch a boat. Yeah, you can definitely use use your tools. So that's what I'm trying to. Yeah, you're at the train. Yeah, big freight train rider. The main Northern Pacific Western United States freight rail yard is right up there. Comes right through there. It's ten times the effing day, and they let me know all the time. Um, yeah. So did I miss that? I, I hit you up, Scott, and I didn't follow up, buddy. I'm sorry. Did I? Did we have that combo? Um, when that first anniversary with Adam and Martin's coming. I've got the link in my descriptions here for their for their uh, YouTube stuff and in your stuff too. Okay, Justin, we're gonna do some right now. We're gonna we're gonna do some white painting right now. And I'm just interviewing in plastic. Yeah, Adam's got his podcast and then Martin and I, the three of us did a, a joint uh, specialty one. I think I found the answer previous quarter. Okay, yep. How is he? Adam's good. Adam's well. Adam's uh, teaching again in Maine. Uh, you know, just living the dream. If I go to uh, Luke, Adam Wilder, um, I think it's Adam NP Wilder on Instagram. That Adam NP, his middle initials, Wilder, all one word on Instagram. I think that's what it is. Or it's Adam Wilder on Instagram. I forget what it is. Yeah, just search Adam Wilder on Instagram, Luke. You can see he, that's where he's posting now today. He's putting up a lot of stuff. He's a busy boy. Um, did Dave stop doing, uh, did Hornet and, and Dave Forrest and all those guys stop doing their videos? I forget, what was it called? Barbizon something or what was that name of that stuff? I forget. The they had like an offshoot thingy they were doing. Okay. So we've got our base colors down. Um, let's spray some hairspray. Let me find a spot here. You, you kind of want to get... I'm kind of holding it underneath in between the... Like I'm, I'm moving my fingers out to hold it. You can use any way you want to do this. I just I just really want to get the upper surfaces of this. I'm not super concerned with down low, but what I like to do is really cover the whole model as much as I can in an even coat, even if I'm not going to use a hairspray. So switch, are we going to switch over here? Let's do one more switch. Hopefully I remember to go back. Okay, make sure I'm on camera. So again, kind of, not like out here, but kind of, you know, Nice even coats. Get to cover the wheels, cover the top deck. 
Carefully rotate it around. Back. Now let's hair dry it real good. I lost all that pretty sheen work. All that burnishing's gone. This is why I don't burnish. That's okay though. Okay, first layer's dried. Return roll. Some of these wheels are loose. I'll show you here real quick. So you can see it's just a glossy dark panzer gray. <laughs> Bye bye, it's Mr. Sheen. All right, so let's do one more quick coat. This one I'm actually going a little bit lighter on. Just want to get a nice even covering. Okay, put this down. That's that. That's the actual hairspray out. That's how it works, just like that. That's how I normally do things. So if if I need to do something smaller, precise, I'll I'll use my decanted and just spray it in the, through the airbrush. But for aerosol spraying with the hairspray, let me, let me, uh, I should wash my hands here. I actually probably need a little quick nature break too. Too much coffee. Um, yeah, I miss Dave. I haven't talked to Dave and Dave Brown or Dave Forrest in a long time. Uh, Chris Babs, always paint the hair sway. <laughs> stylish. Dude, I have, no, I have nothing to be stylish with, my friend. Did you be rolling in here causing trouble, Chris? All right, Florian, uh, how do you deal with decals without burning? Well, okay, so, uh, in the case of using a decal, th those are going to be the first things that go down. So in the in the workflow conversation, you know, get all your base colors down, build up your hairsprays, get your decals down at the same time too. I would, if it's if it's not a you know a, a covered model of, of decals, then I'd spot varnish them and move on, reflat coat it and move on. So once I get to the clear coat, it's the same part of if I have decals to deal with, like in here, it's the same basic principle like what we did with this guy, where we put these decals on early, early on in the process. Get those all down and done, and then when you go with your with your top coat, then you can weather on top of that. And then with the chipping stuff, you're just gonna have to work your way around the decals and work with them. There's no hard, pure answer because the decals are a sticker. So you're not gonna be able to chip whatever paint's on that or around it, and then you're gonna have to use some other stuff. That's also why I spray my, as much as my markings as I can so I can get little wear and tear in the actual marking by the chipping process. So I do try to spray mask my markings most of the time. I know you can't always, but, and this is just gonna be where you're just gonna have to throw them down and do it kind of a thing. Like we're gonna have to get those decals down, seal them all up and then move move, move on. And that's kind of where I'm at. And I say early as you can, early in, in the process. Cause that's always gonna be the best situation for you. That way you're not adding varnishes on later that are gonna affect the sheens that you're getting uh, through the various processes. Let's try this one real good. That is a parade glossy panzer gray. <laughs> okay, so this is smooth. It is dry to the touch. There's a little bit of matte texture to it because it's a matte paint base underneath, so there's a little bit of tooth. Uh, I do not recommend glosses, cle clears of the same to your floor and anything. There's nothing going on now. It's, it is hairspray, then there'll be a top coat of paint that we're gonna chip. So there's nothing in between. Guys that want to seal all this stuff up beforehand, I don't get into any of that kind of stuff. I never have. I just don't find, think it's necessary. If you do this properly, uh, it's not necessary to seal all this stuff up. If you're going to do like three, four, five colors, then you can seal in between because you're trying to protect certain stuff, and I understand that. However, that said too, sometimes I don't get too much into the conversation of like with here, we had one initial coat of white down and then we, we hairsprayed and did another coat and we didn't seal in between. And these are the, the results we're kind of getting. So I kind of let it go with how it's going to naturally progress. Just depends on the look you're after a little bit. Um, the model will dictate whether you really need to, to lay, if you're doing multiple layers. With this kind of stuff where it's two colors, I don't really care, honestly, to be honest with you guys. Anything that happens underneath, I don't really care because it won't, it won't be a big deal. And there's a lot about the decal conversation with Glaw. I don't really want to get into decals today, today, but yeah, you know, I I think the, the key to decals to me is really using the fluids, the setters and the softers, the micro set and the micro in this case I have, or the Gunzi Mr. Set or Mr. Softer. If you use those properly, I don't think you really have a lot of problems with silvering, to be truthful. 
regardless because I, I I decaled the little arm the other day that was straight up over the matte weathering just threw it down just slapped it on there but it's that little it's that stuff there that really does its thing you don't have the silver I've really never had silvering issues so um, but yeah so but yeah I mean a lot of guys just believe in, in gloss underneath I don't want to you know do what you do do what you got to do um, this is a spray mask I sprayed that cross on there's no decals on this model um, but you don't have to I mean okay coach you are sealing the decals to level that edge so you're not protecting the decal I think there's a dis there's a misinformation in terms of what's going on with that what we're trying to do to clarify for everybody out there my, my boys well, do I have anything okay well it doesn't matter um, what you're trying to do with the top coat on a decal is level that off you're not trying to protect it you don't have to protect it it doesn't need protection it's a pretty tough little game you can't even see that um, but there's there's you can just see let me see here if I can get this I did a decent job, but there's a little lip right there. The reason you're top coating your decal and why I say it's a spot varnish is you want to fluid fill that little ledge. That's all you're trying to do. And then you then you matte coat that out so that you have an even matte surface to weather on. That's why I'm I'm saying that because I think there's confusions about decals and really what's going on with that is that you don't want to see that lip. You're gonna you're fluid leveling filling that lip is what you're doing, technically. Protection is just secondary you know, you know you know that whole thing uh, because truth be told is the protection only comes when you're out in mother nature these go on your shelf and stuff like that you don't you know there's no like protection issue it's not like something's going to come along and, and wear it off just be sitting on your shelf you know you're not you're not beast off of uv lights and stuff like that so are we good are we good on that we understand <laughs> did we get all that yeah be the little coach on that one but that's that's really what when we say what you're really, really trying to do is, is, is you're trying to level that surface back out so it looks painted on. That's the goal. It's not a protection thing. So, so hopefully that clarifies that a little bit. And that's why I say you can spot varnish them because you don't need to worry about the rest of the surface. You're just trying to get rid of that little lip. That's what you're really trying to do. Okay. Hopefully that clarifies everything for you guys. Where's my insignia? Here it is. Okay. So let's spray some Mission Models Whites again. Yeah. Yeah, and that's kind of Zal. The problem with the, it's the problem with the internet. Oh, thank you, Mike, my brother. You got it. Okay, <laughs> I will do that. Fortunately, I didn't go anywhere. This is why I should never switch the camera view. Okay. All right. Enough of the chatter. But yeah, that's a really important topic, though, Zal, because the internet, in, in truth, is it's it's a lot of dudes that you know everybody's a know it all. And I'm not saying I'm an, I, well, maybe I am saying I'm a know-it-all, but we have to have clear, clear terms to me is one of the more critical parts of skill modeling so that we're all internationally on the same level when we talk to each other. I think that's really important personally. So there's, you know, I've been doing this, you know, remember I'm, I'm 50 and I know you get old motherfucker just out here doing this stuff, but that's what it is. That's really what you're trying to do. It's really not a protection issue at all. Uh, and then the, the matte coat is you want the bike for the type of weather. And, and I show you how I do it. So I prefer a matte because of the type of weathering I do. So that's why I would resurface that with the, with the, with the matte clear. Um, let's see here. Let's, let's mix in the cup on this one because we need a little bit more. <clears throat> so we'll spray some white. Ooh, that's got stuff in it. Hopefully that helps you guys. Insignia white. So we're going to use it. So I like the insignia white. So in, in my historical painting um, in the past, I often will throw... Um, with this dude in here, I don't. Rem I believe it was deck tan, but in this guy, in the white, I throw like 10% deck tan. I like to spray my white washes with an off-white first most of the time. So this Insignia White from Mission is one of the nicer pale off-whites, which I'm starting to really like the color a lot. And I'll do that, I'll hone in on a color that I really get a lot of maximum use out of. So let's, uh, let's throw some down. This is a white wash, so I'm not gonna be super precise. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not painting a white model, which is fine by me because I hate painting white models. Um, yeah, okay, so we're good. Thanks for all the insight. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, and I and again, this is all to get you guys locked in and honed in. You know, you boys are going to go out there and fight the battles and, and do your shit on the contest table. So I want you kicking ass. I've done my stuff. Let's get these guys out of here. We don't need those. Let's see. I need this. I need the cleaner. Okay, throw some thinner in this in a second. Okay. So the little Lazy Susan thingy here, this is from Target. Um, 
like three or four dollars. These are great. These are my usual go-tos. When I'm doing full-size models like this, this is when I'm not touching stuff now. Uh, did I hear you're gonna build? It? You know, Jethro, I've got a. Um, it's an Academy Tempest 72nd scale test model hiding here somewhere, and that's what I was talking about. I would love to build the Tempest. A Mark II would be great. I love the Mark II with the uh, annular radiator myself. Okay, what do we got? I got my brushes. Let me see, I want... Uh, just get myself prepped for this guy. We're gonna do a little bit more of a full-time spray or full-blown spray job. Making a mess. You guys good? Are we good on time? 220? We've been going that long? All right. Me and my three hour streams. So it's probably almost dinner time in New York, East Coast. Okay. This goes pretty quickly though. And I'll try to remove it like a real time speed so you get kind of a feel for how this really goes. You got kind of the slow speed on the turret and that kind of gives you the idea so we'll move. So mission models thinner in the, in the insignia white. Don't want to put my oil brush in that. I'm usually usually I, I, I do the steps totally different days, so there's never really a mix of brushes. So I do have to be a little bit aware when I'm doing demos because I got all sorts of watercolor brushes. Yeah, you're welcome, Florian. You're welcome, brother. You know, if I put the coach hat on, you know what I mean. Like it's 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 everybody pay attention, huddle around, let's gather up, let's you know that play didn't go very well, so let's let's clean this up and and you know so we execute our, our stuff properly. Okay, that actually that flowed pretty good. And see how it's kind of a creamy color? It's a beautiful little color, but when it goes, that's actually what it looks like. So it actually gets a little bit of pop it, it, because of the base is so dark, the contrast is so strong. What I find sometimes with the, with the, with the pure whites uh, is, is you get kind of a like, a, like a gray ghosty look, if you will, and I want a little bit more of a, kind of a old school white. I don't know how to describe it, but I think that makes sense to you guys. You know where I'm going. And then from that, I also, okay, another good point too, real quick, and then we'll start spraying it, is with extreme colors of pure black and pure white, when you spray those pure colors, and the reason I'm using an off-white is because you saw with the turret, I'm able to come back in with a pure white oil to start layering up, like right up in here, you get that slight opacity shift. That's where you start to visually work with the, the really pure colors, blacks and whites in particular. You spray like 80, 90% gray, and then come back with the blacks and pop some details out. That's how you play that up. You try to always avoid, in most cases, unless you really, really, you know, are on your game of, of using the pure, pure colors. Because you can see, this is what I'm talking about. See how this color up here? It's kind of got a ghosty look to it a little bit, whereas, whereas we go over here, there's a little bit more of a richness to the tone. It's, it's hard to tell a little bit on the camera, but you can see it up in person. You can see the difference between this um, and then that, what I'm talking about. So that's why I think with the, with the colors, you really want to, in particular, I, I prefer a little bit of, a, of an off-white shade. Clean up the table up a little bit so I can spray. I told you these dudes are going to end up on a model soon. I was putting those on there. <laughs> I was just having some fun. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'll start making little tank noises here in a second if you, if you don't stop me. Okay. Okay, we're good. All right, 1020. Okay, you guys are good. I mean, it's not too late for you. Do I want this one? I'll switch brushes again. Run some pure thin earth here real quick. Okay, I'm just getting my airbrush a little bit prepped. Making sure it's spraying good. Okay. This is my Tamiya Superfine, it's my point two. So usually paper towels lie to you. <laughs> By the way, when you do all your test spraying on paper on paper, they absorb, they totally lie to you. <laughs> Like that looks beautiful. Yeah, really? Wait till you get to the model. Okay. Just put a nice light white dust coat down, just kind of working it in. I'm working the cracks a little bit first. Kind of working inside out. So I think it was Joshua, was that the right one? Um, asked about spraying the mission white and all this stuff. So this is. So you can see how bright that pops even though it's an insignia white. 
And we're going right over the marking. We don't even care. Now I'm kind of going off of my experience. I've studied this vehicle quite a bit, you know, but I'm also just kind of building up the the whitewash in the, in the nooks and crannies, if you will. Just kind of a cloudy top pattern up top a little bit. Top flat surfaces are the, obviously the most difficult to chip. So I'm getting a little bit of just kind of a random effect here, just kind of building things up a little bit slowly. Coming over to the front. I move, this is how I move pretty quick. And the hairspray is all dry, so and I move in a little bit quicker, trying to do some, just kind of get some shitty looking paint. back of the headlights really good you know stuff where the paint's not going to come off easily I try to go a little bit heavier kind of a, just a general you know observational stuff there's nothing special about it getting around the headlight area the little turn signal area around the tools a little bit so what I do with the tools and stuff and we'll talk about it and we'll show some stuff in a future stream with tool painting on the model is when they're when they're in place like this What I like to do is, is I use little post-it notes as a, like a quick mask. Now I see your question here, buddy. I'll get you in two seconds. I'm in the zone, my friends. Uh, so I'll put a little paper, paper uh, post-it note mask around the tools underneath so I can hand paint them in place. That's a real quick, easy way to kind of do that. So now I'm just kind of getting the general feel for, for the whitewash. Now I'd probably really be studying my photos or I'd have two or three like in front of me. But I got too much shit in front of me. <laughs> I can't deal with it today. And I'm painting kind of shitty on purpose. Like it's kind of a rough, it's not like super precise, which makes it, you know, really nice to work with the whitewashes. And as it is getting kind of warm now, it is tip drying a little bit. Is that the right thinner? Yeah. So, okay, so I'm gonna, a little Q tip, a little thinner in there. I pull the needle back so there's, the needle is off or is out of the hole. I just spin that in there and I release the needle into the paper, into the Q-tip and then spin it. Boom. So that's acrylic tip dry. That's another way to do that. Just trying to get some white down in there. I wouldn't do much different to like a camouflage either, like in terms of if I'm spraying a camo. You know, it just kind of depends on the subject matter a little bit. So now I'm starting to build up some of the opacity. And the camera's probably gonna struggle a little bit with this, so it's gonna start popping some glare, so I apologize. And we'll, we'll reset here in a sec. So let me keep focused for a second, guys, and then we'll really come back in and we'll talk about this. Because we'll let that paint set for a little bit longer, too. This is, again, Mission Models Insignia White. Kinda going a little bit shitty around the engine deck a little bit, a little bit spotty. I'm slowly building up opacity. And then with the road wheels, what I like to do, and there's no rhyme or reason, is just kind of, you know, dust a few, then hit one like really good, you know, so you get a little bit of variation in that. And with the idler wheels and the dry sprockets, I try to go a little bit um, more opaque in the middle and, and not really worry about the rest of it. And I'm missing some of the wheels on this one too. I, I forget where I've stashed everything on this. And then let's go back here to this guy here. 
This is just being a little bit sloppy, but a little bit also knowing how this goes. Got a nice little deal there. I actually made up way too much paint. I'll spray these just because I got some. I'm gonna have to redo some things on this model to get it up to snuff. Oh, and I lost a, a return roller. So that's spraying a heavy whitewash, or you know, a a, a full-blown whitewash. There's not much more to it than that. Um, It's basically already dry too, with this kind of acrylic summertime paint. It tends to... So again, much like the turret, I've, now that this is kind of my base to work with, um, and this would take me probably, you know, if I was to chip this fully, we'll start chipping, but we'll, if I was to really, you know, chip this completely, it's gonna take probably a, a good, almost week to really chip this to competition level standards. tuning myself a little bit and the key to a good wash a good whitewash like this a wartime whitewash is you don't need to be perfect you know that's but I'm not sloppy you know what I'm saying but but I'm not perfect either just hitting some of these little hatch covers here these ones move the other way Getting some of the bolt details in here, spraying a little bit heavier inside the bolt details so that that white will be down in there. So now I'm going around some of the weld beads, some of the welds too. Oh, I used the I used the Woody's little Archer thingy on that. I haven't used one of those um, weld decals yet, those resin decals. That's what that is because it's actually missing that weld there. I'll get to you guys in two seconds, promise. I'm in the zone, man. Come on, don't bother. Okay. So hopefully, Joshua, you can see that that's kind of the, the nice, how that goes. And you can go back to my thinning part of the, in the demo there to really see. Capacity interest. We'll wrap up here in a second and we'll start chipping. I want to do good. I want to do this right for you guys. I want to show you how I tackle this. That's what I'm taking my. Okay, I'm out of paint. Let me clean real quick. I'll get to questions and then we'll chip real quick and then we'll we'll let you have the night off. <laughs> Unless you just want to stay on string with me, boys, and we'll just sit here and chip. Chip, you chip, chip. Okay, yeah, no, this is actually this is actually all going really well. This is how, uh, yeah, totally out of the box, Dominic. To me, it's stroke three, out of the box, bone stock. I do have some of these guys. We'll get to tracks really soon, I do promise. I've said that a few times now, but um, maybe Sunday? Just clean it up with some thinner now. Just want to run that through real quick. We'll get to some questions and then we'll start chipping. And then we'll 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 use this guy like we did with the train and the robot. We'll we'll keep bringing them back. 
over time. Same with the turret. We'll keep going. We'll keep going on both of these for now. I'll try to find the pieces in the other tracks. I do want to put on uh, early winter cutting tracks. Is it Oscutton first or was Oscutton first? Yeah, I think Oscuttons were first and winter cuttings were later. Darren, you still out there? Remind me, brother. <laughs> There was a time when I even knew the, the Fruel model uh, part number off the top of my head. ATL something for whatever track tracks, but I'm, I'm, a, little bit, I'm a little bit rusty with my track uh, Fruel model numbers. I keep hearing stuff you guys got to drill the holes out with those now too. I wonder if there's I've, a lot of all my track sets are fairly old now. In fact, dude, you want to talk about old. You want to know how old I am. These ones... Some of you guys might actually remember this. So these guys have the wire in the track already. I actually think this is a great setup. So that's that's molded like that. And that was a top secret process he was doing. And then what you do, it's hard on the last one, but making them, making them is pretty easy, is that these clamp together and then you basically go in there and see how that is? There's that, there's that, uh, female opening right there and these are white metal soft white metal so you put those you push those together and then you flip it upside down well usually it's it's easier it's a little bit harder on this one because it's a full run but basically let me try that one more time and it's usually on the on the table <laughs> ah, there it goes so they, they do fall apart though if you don't do it right but you push these together and then you clamp those ends down that clamps around that that pin and it's the cast details the same on both it's really nice I kind of wish they kept going with that personally they switched to the wire because it was just I guess an easier way to go But anyway, that's those those go back a ways. Those are probably 20 old. That's probably a 20 year old set, to be truthful. Okay, so let's let's scroll up some questions. Let me catch up with you fellas. Let that set up for a minute. It's mission model, so let's let you know, give it a give it a good 10, 15 minutes to set for a second. Let that paint kind of kick. If you go right now, you're probably gonna be a little bit too messy with the mission model. So I'm letting it set up a little bit. Let me scroll back up here where we at. Okay, Frank, hey, what's up, bud? I see some names rolling through. John Fossey, there you are, bud. I see some guys. Thank you, Mike. Switch the camera, Jeff. Oh, let's focus. Mhm. Mm that's just, that's a nice little solid. Probably a little bit on the on the pale side. I could probably even go more opaque if I wanted to. Yeah. Who's counting, Franklin? Yeah. Oh, let's see. Harvey's is always posting. Oh, we'll jump those up down. Okay. Yeah. Good, 237, okay, we're pushing. Okay, so we answered, did we good on decals? You guys clear on decals now? What's going on with that? Are we all, all caught up on that one? Dankeschön, braves Mädchen. My dog commands, good girl. Good dog, yeah, no, no, you're good, you're welcome. Uh, are you gonna build the Tempest? Okay, so any, uh, any, am I missing any questions here? I hope not. Paul just did a review in the Mark II Tempest. Cool. Yeah, I haven't seen Paul's stuff in a while. Paul's really good too. Okay. Yeah, you guys are just hanging. Okay, question, Mike. How do you uh, make off-white colors with Tamiya paint? Just mix paints, brother. Yeah, add a bit of tanner white. Sim super simple. Don't overthink that stuff, Zal. You're super simple. Super simple. Mix and paints, mix and paint. If you want a shade of something that you, you want to shift it to, if it's like a white or like a black, if you want to shift it into something, um, just you're just going to add a few drops. And be careful with white because it, it takes like one drop if you put one drop of red and white it's like instantly pink so it doesn't take much um now a white with a really light beigey tan color that's no big deal a buffer deck deck tan was my favorite xf xf 55 into the xf 60 was my dunkel gel mix like a like a almost 50 50. um and then for like your your mission or not your mission models but for your whitewash with the tamiya and xf2 or x2 I actually would mix up X2 with XF2 as kind of a satin white and then 10-15% um, deck tan to calm it down a little bit. But you can see the Insignia White, how white it looks on camera. It's actually fairly white when you spray it over the contrast color like this. Okay. Let me get my chip in stuff ready. Model Club or the tracks? Yeah, apparently, John. It's 50 bucks a pop. <laughs> yeah, my, I still have enough. Thankfully, I have enough stash on tracks. I'm, I've got a whole like uh, container of tracks. 
Uh, SMO4 will cover a lot of track ground too, by the way. Just coming at you. Coming at you, boys, from uh, the Tamiya tracks, um, plastic tracks, and metal tracks in SM4 coming at you. So I'm excited for that book. And we'll debut that when the book prints out. Like I think I've said that before. I'm keeping everything kind of on the down low. Being kind of quiet. Uh, picked up a tank model the other day. Yeah, this is a third, this is a Stug. So this the short barrel Stug, Mike. And then later in the war, when the, they wanted bigger guns, they they the, the, the long barrel Stugs. Um, and there's various other types of, of of the tank destroyer motif. But I just love these things. I like me an S tank too, by the way. Uh, that's another one I like. I've always liked these kind of vehicles. Um, Frank said it came in late. Is that model shiny? Because yes, it is. It was a. It was a. Just you can scrub it back. Actually, if you guys aren't aware, on a live stream, you can actually scrub the timeline back if you want to hop back and see something on the thing as it goes. Um, so Zal asks, how long is the window period you can keep chipping the surface? Do you whitewash the entire tank and do it on food surfaces? So this is how I work, Zal. So one of the things I wanted to show you guys with this in particular, um, the way I would do this, if this is a lower hull or a, a non-turreted tank, get this all done. Then I would chip this whole thing, which is what I'm gonna to proceed to do at least as far as I can get for the next 20 minutes. See where, see how we do. Um, and then if it has a turret, you can do that as its own separate model. So you can do them in separate steps, but that because you can kind of paint and do the whole thing at once, paint and do the whole thing at once. But in this case, because there is no turret, it's super easy. Just do it all at one time. So all, right now, I could probably chip this, uh, if I'm honest, Sal, probably up to two to three weeks realistically and get some decent results. This is fresh, so it's gonna give me my, my probably my best window of opportunity. As it, as it dries, that kind of closes up. Does that make sense? So like in a week or two, my ability to chip gets like this and then kind of, it kind of closes in on you. So that's why I recommend, especially competition level stuff, if you're really trying to go for, okay, I wanna do, I wanna nail it. Spend your time now. So say it's whatever today is Wednesday, Spend from like Wednesday through Sunday and get this whole thing, just get it money and then redo mistakes or anything that, that gets effed up, something that, you know, sometimes you'll cut through, no big deal, do a little spot respaint, you know, brush paint some details in, repaint all the tools, whatever you gotta do, get it all dialed in, all the painting done. And that's what I mean with the decals, get all the decals, so the decals would already be on this, now you've got the whitewash, now you get a chip, get it all done, get everything just money and then t don't mess with it. You don't have to varnish, you don't have to do anything because what you're gonna see now is you're gonna get the various, you see how you're getting a little bit of the sheen through the light glare? That's all gonna play out later on. That's how, that's how that one happened here. To re-emphasize, there are no varnishes on this thing after this point in time. In fact, there was no varnishes on this model whatsoever, even when I was working on it. Because you can see how I can get the wood and as I rotate, I get a little bit of hot graphite up in there. I get kind of the matte. All this happened to get that little polished uh, tie, tie, uh, tie loop there. Tie down loop. Oh, man. I'm gonna have to go back to school for my terminology, boys. Uh, all the spare tracks are off too. This thing, the nose was covered in spare tracks too. But, but how I can kind of get that, and when you see up close in the, in the darker colors, there's a slightly different shift to the white. And it's that subtle change, which is where the golds and silvers lies, if that makes sense. You guys really want to. You guys really want to push yourselves. Really want to achieve next level stuff. That's where it goes. So, so that's why the, when I really talk about varnishes in particular, you'll you've never seen it in my conversations, and I know it's a big deal out in the real world. So that's those are the those are. I mean, real honest here. Those are the subtle things that make the big difference. So from here on out, I won't I won't be varnishing anything. There'll be no more clear coats. I won't even think about it. Yeah, the stream can go on forever. Uh, Archer Welby's are nice, but Uncle Night Shift two-part epoxy. Yeah, no, there's oh, there's a billion ways to do uh, the, the well beads for sure. I just had never used them, and I wasn't gonna draw a well bead on at 10 o'clock last night. <laughs> like, ooh, look at that! I have that. Let's throw it down. That was a quick down and dirty. And plus, the well beads on early war tanks are often really precise, so I didn't mind that either. Um, John, you're late. You're all, you're totally cool, buddy. Uh, how would you adapt this technique for using Soviet turret slogans? So. Um, depending on when the slogan is applied, if it's if it's something painted on after, or if it's underneath, it's just like this. Um, put put like the decal. Everything goes down on first, then do all your stuff. If it's a captured vehicle or and or the slogan's been repainted over the whitewash, uh, either hand paint it if you've got really good reference. That's actually not as hard as it sounds. Um, or you sla I try to do a dry transfer. You know if you can. But if you're gonna have to use a decal, you're gonna have to just treat the whole thing. Get it all done, reset it back to mat, and then you're back to this stage, and then you just move on forward from that point on. So that's how you do. I try to, because of the Russians in particular, 
there are some decent decals and stuff out there, but I try to hand paint that stuff as much as I can. You get a little bit cooler result, even though it might push your limits on skills. Uh, hey dude, sauerkraut. Hey, what's up, bud? Love these streams. Thank you, man. How are you? It's been a long time. Have you ever used a life color in Signy White? If uh, what does, what do you what else did you mix it with? In, uh, um, Raul, I can't remember if I have or not. I haven't used life color heavily in a long time. Uh, usually, I use a lot of off whites in general. Eifenbein, any of the Eifenbein colors are really good. You can even come in with a little Eifenbein here. This is actually a little bit too white for me. I probably should have gone uh, even dirtier with the white, but that's no big deal. I can always fix it. So let's see here. Yeah, John's the model clubs are the tracks. Master, is it model club or master club? Master club, yeah, yeah, master club. Okay, we good? Let's chip. Let's do it. We'll do about 20 minutes and then we'll call it a day. Because you're right, I could go on forever. Uh, I think you guys would hang out with me for it too. Yeah, we're still pushing over 50 viewers, so we're doing good. Okay, this little dude, get my water back over here. So the beauty of this, another part of this uh, process that I really love is, is simplicity. It's you, a little bit of water, and just, you know, in this case, I'm gonna focus on the, that's not the brush I want. I got my one, where's my little guy? I pulled them out already. Is he hiding over here? My better brush is over here. Hmm. And the brushes walk off. I think the brush abandoned, oh, it's upside down. Duh. I was looking at the handle, here it is, this guy. This is how it looks in the, this is how it looks when you first get them. So do you just keep using this brush for other things until it starts to kind of turn into this and then you can shift it over into the uh, production line for abuse. Okay, we're gonna zoom in a little bit here. Eyeballs, everybody set, you guys ready? I'm gonna get in the zone. Uh, question, do you hand paint slogans with oils? You can use whatever you like. Uh, a lot of guys use acrylics. Um, just remember with the oils, if you do it with the oils, there's a little bit of, of bleed out. If you're not careful and you do some other solvent stuff on top of it, you can wipe it off a little bit after a period of time. Um, I probably do a, a acrylic hand paint personally, but I, like I did do the oils on the train, so you can. It's just whatever you feel comfortable with. Uh, enamels too, by the way. White washable. I've never used those sour, the, white, the washable white paints. I just never have. I've never seen a need for me to use them. This process works. I get whatever effects I want from what I'm doing between this and the and the white oil paint on the on the on the back end. So it's just it's nothing to do with. I don't think they're good or not. I just I, I haven't seen a need for me to, to jump into them. From what I've seen of the people using them, you can get a decent you know result. Okay. So wet the brush. Unload. Let me zoom out just so you can see real quick. So wet the brush. Unload, got my little paper towel here. This is this is my setup. This is usually when I'm working, I actually pull in an extra paper towel because this will get pretty wet. So I have a secondary one here too. Uh, these guys are be out of the way a little bit. So this is it, just you the water, the dealio, the Jimmy Jams. Are we out of music? Or is it just really low? No, it's just really low. Okay, put that on. okay let's do this, all right. Back. Zoom in. So like I said before, every time, go dry on the brush. Let's just see what happens. Pick a spot that's not going to be like you're pissed off if it goes wrong. Okay, so see how fast that went? Okay, so I got to be careful now. So that tells me right away that this isn't going to take much. I probably have more hairspray than paint. So because that went pretty fast, it's telling me to be careful. Which means I'm going to get some really fast, delicate chips if, if I don't put a lot of water down. You guys can see all that. Just kind of soften the back edge so it's not so harsh. That's why I picked this spot though, because that's going to be a hot spot anyway for the crew. So I wasn't super worried. And this is what I'm talking about with the mission model stuff in particular. You get really, really delicate, fine stuff. 
So all that right in there under the brush, so those little, little scuffs and streaks. So this is also probably telling me that the curing window hasn't really popped off as much as I want it to. So I'm going to have to be pretty careful. So I'm unloading the brush to almost dry status before I touch the model. But you can see how much, see how little, see how the water, you can just, you almost don't even see it. That's really critical when you have a, when you have a model like this where it's, you're working with the chemicals. In this case, it's, it's a really delicate situation. So don't manhandle this thing too much in terms of scrubbing that brush in and don't be throwing a lot of water down. I'd actually try to go a little bit light right now, knowing I'm going to come back later anyway. So I'm moving around. I rotate the angle of the brush according to the, sh to the shapes in the, in the, uh, the panels. That's why you see the brush kind of going all sorts of different directions. See, I don't like that. I hate when they do that. That's okay. We can, we can work with that. So I'm trying to scrub around it. There it goes. So we kind of caught it a little bit. And it's fighting me a little bit. These are a little bit bigger than I was hoping for. So one of the reasons why though, is you see how thin, that, that's why I was saying I should have gotten a little bit more white. You see how thin that white top coat is? It's really delicate. And there's two layers of hairspray underneath, so it's, it doesn't take much to get this to go. And this is probably why you guys probably struggle with Mission Models more than the other brands a little bit. I will reiterate the top surface flat plate chipping is the hardest chipping to do too, by the way, because there's not a lot of details up here to work with. So I'm actually focused pretty hard right now. I want to make sure that these go pretty good. So you can see how I'm just barely kissing that surface. There's a slight slope to this panel, so I can give it a little direction now. Just kind of improve that look a little bit. So these are too strong in my opinion. I actually don't really like these if I'm if I'm actually evaluating this. Like there's too much contrast. There's no there's no in between stuff. And again, that's not a the end of the world end of the world. It's not one of those oh shit things. focus on the control now just trying to 
scratch the surface a little bit because of the way the chipping's going so I've adjusted kind of what I'm doing now I'll get to the chat here in two seconds and look up here and try to There's some really fine ones in there, but there's some really large ones in between too. There's not a lot of like middle ground right now. So I know I'm gonna need to do a little bit more work on this one to really get it there. So there's, I'm still getting some really nice stuff, but I'm getting some of this like where it's too much for me. So that means I'm gonna have to do another layer of white to fix this, which is no big deal. It's a little bit like the turret where we did, where we did another layer of the white. And that means I've got more hairspray than the paint can handle. I probably could have got away with just the one layer of hairspray with this one, but that's okay. Because this is what I want you guys to see is when it, when, it, when it fights you, it's not fighting me, it's just you have to be really delicate. Because you want to get these really, really soft stuff. And I'll look up here in a second here. Once you get kind of the, the, the detail of the brush down to where you're, you're kind of getting this. Now fortunately these do get pretty beat up when they're in country, so I'm not over, I'm not like, oh it's too much. It's just I'm getting kind of really delicate ones and getting really strong ones. I'm not getting a lot of middle ground. And they're, they're coming up pretty fast too, like almost instantly. Hold on fellas, I'll get to you in two seconds. I'm trying to get this no tech light just right. See, I'm getting a really big one, but I got some really fine ones back here. So I'm getting kind of a, a duality of chips. Like a little bit on the inconsistent side, if that makes sense. I might not have mixed my white up really well either. The emulsion may not have been really good. Like some are, some are gripping really good and, and then some are not. That's okay. This, this is going a little bit better over here. But also remember chipping though, this kind of stuff too is really early in the process. There's so much more to come to fix all this stuff and to, and to really, you know, obviously weather this stuff up. It's, there's nothing. Oftentimes chip models can look a little shitty, I will admit. I seem to be pulling up more of the gray too. That's a little interesting. This stuff's been on there for a while. Okay, well, let me get this fender and then I'll pop, pop my head up. See, stuff like that in there is really nice. This over here is a little, little bit too much for me. So what we're gonna do is kinda Go a little bit heavy. We'll overspray some of this stuff here, and I'll show you how I fix that. I'll put. I'm gonna put another layer of white on this. I think it needs it. Yeah, see, it's it's coming up a little bit too easy for me, so it needs a little bit more paint. Just kind of dancing it around a little bit. Even that wear and tear up a little bit so it's a little bit more natural looking. 
it's too much, but it's it's a little bit. Uh, it's uh, what am I trying to say here? Yeah, I don't know. Well, if if we're kind of going a late late winter, early spring look, we're changing our fashion sense up. Interestingly, there's no hairspray under the gray, and a lot of the gray's coming up. I don't know why that is. Couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you. Okay, let me show you how I kind of adjust this and fix this here in a sec. Yeah, so this is what I'm talking about. See where it's cleaning up the chips and before I get new chips? That's that's kind of where you can tell it's fine. It's not enough paint down. So we'll fix that here. It doesn't look actually that bad. <laughs> I've been a little critical of myself. I want perfect. I want it perfect. All right, what do we got? Uh, what do you do if you keep scribbing? Um, the paint won't chip. Oh, if it's a case where it's not coming off, uh, it's the opposite of this. There's there's not enough hairspray and there's too much paint. Usually a combination of the two. Or it's cured so much that you can't get the water under it. Let's see here, what are we doing here? Uh, let's go back. Is it necessary to do a color modulation base coat? Right. I usually don't, Zal. Um, it is a waste of time. Uh, just because you just won't see. Yeah, see, that's too much. That's that's like a, an abandoned thing in the woods. <laughs> but we're going we're gonna to spray more white. I actually just got rid of some of the, the splotchiness to it because I was a repair of that. See, I was looking to spray the slogans over hairspray, not decals. Uh, if you're gonna use a spray mask, then you just spray it on there, brother. You're good. I'm gonna figure, yeah, you're totally fine. Just spray up, spray up. Spray masks are, I, I prefer them. Um, how does it deal over, over decals in the paint? Um, if there's, you're gonna, you're gonna already have, Frank, to your question, you should already have a matte coat over those decals. It should all be one coat. Does that make sense? Because you got a matte paint with a decal, you're gonna reset that decal surface to a matte. Anyway, I would think you would. So you shouldn't have too much of a difference. Um, it, there, in other words, there will be a difference between a glossy, a satin, and a matte, but you're gonna probably wanna reset that. You want a little bit of tooth in there. And this might've been too smooth. That burnishing might've counteracted that a little bit. Uh, Airlander C looks great with MMP. Uh, question, do you always do a second layer wider when you do? Yeah, in this case, so this case I want to because I don't really have a ton of choices. This I was looking at this kind of in my head going, that's actually fairly pale. By comparison's sake, and this is why I didn't have, you know, I was doing it on kind of, See how opaque, zoom, zoom. See, I want to get more opaque and see I'm, I'm not, I'm not opaque. So I want to get, I want to get more opacity in the white. It's, it's, it's actually the type of painting I did was better for just like one layer of hairspray. Like a really like rough, like if that was kind of a really heavily worn look and I didn't want that for the Stug, I want to go a little bit more. So this is cool because all I have to do is deal with this and then respray a little bit more, so. It's no big deal. Uh, let's see where we at. Oh, Zal, come off in a big ugly patch. Yeah, so you can see how controlled I was, John, where I knew to, to Zal's point about the thing and what you guys are talking about. That's what I'm talking about, Where, which is fine, because honestly, it not going, like the turret went so well. Like I feel like I cheated you guys out of something here. Like this went, this went really nicely and, and, and fits the, the motif, if you will. This one kind of doesn't, and I'm getting a lot of red shown. I don't know what's going on with that. It's no big deal. Like the gray's coming off or something. Okay, what do we got here? So we're gonna do round two of the white just to kind of pump the opacity up on this stuff. Just because of that situation, which is fine because oftentimes it's, it's a teachable moment. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. This is normal. I, I do this all the time. This kind of stuff happens all the time. Don't want you to think you don't want anything. Don't want you to question. Don't judge me, boys. So I want something sort of, what I'm looking for, like this right in here, uh, this part up here, that actually, the fender's fine because this is a damaged, torn up fender, so I'm okay with that. This up here uh, is, is a bit too much, and I could have fixed that with the oils. This isn't half bad right in here. 
but I can tell it's gonna be this way all over the whole model. So let's let's just take take a second and spray some stuff real quick. I don't think it's a big deal. And we're gonna go right back over that. No hairspray, no nothing. And this is me fixing a real model. Like this, this is this is exactly how I do it. And I'm trying to limit my contact with the model to just the drive sprocket area because I know the, the sprocket will cover all that if I have any hand stuff or anything. So I can turn this, so I can get the angle for this properly. Now some of you guys will mount them on the handles and stuff like that. This is just, I tend to do the um, these Lazy Susans for myself. blown out on camera. It's a little, bit, a little more subtle in person. So it's kind of like a second uh, post shade of white. Just kind of letting some of the bleed through the previous patches show up. See, and that's all salvageable. See how I fixed that? I left a little bit going, a little bit kind of in that classic post shading. Leave a little bit exposed. Of course, now I grab the whole model. <laughs> it's okay, it's just by the fenders. tighter now and doing like little squigglies and little just kind of discolorations and jimmy jams in here. Making it look a little more field applied. Smaller spray patterns, more in scale. And I'll pop up in a sec. Kind of muscled way, my way through this. All right, that's not too bad. All right, hopefully that fixed the problem. I'll leave that in for a second. I might have to do something. Let's just see here. So consistent surface underneath. Yeah, exactly, Frank. You want? I typically recommend a consistent matte surface. You need a little bit of bite, a little bit of tooth. Uh, I don't do chipping over uh, in this manner over any satin or glosses at all. Ever, ever have. 
guess you have to deal with this. Yeah, no, hopefully, Michael. That, that, you know what? I'm totally, totally fine with, 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 you know, I didn't screw up, but it wasn't my A game. It makes sense. I did better on the turret than I did on this. Um, what pressure are you spraying at? What size needle are you use? This is my, um, and this is because this is just my mission models, my main one. It's the Tamiya Superfine. It's a point two. Um, and I've got it open pretty wide and I'm, I spray it 12 to 15 psi. I think it's around 13, 14 and then I use my little my little Mac and it's open all the way. So I'm spraying it a full 13, 14, 15 psi. And this is just crappy whitewash painting. I'm actually, let me clean it up a little bit. I'm gonna dust one more layer over this whole thing. Kind of an aircraft uh, post shade idea. It's very much in the, in that, here's your little quasi shitty black basing attempt. <laughs> Did a really bad job guys. Let's just build up one solid top layer. Now you can see the insignia white starting to come in a little bit too. There you go, I should have done this the first time. I haven't sprayed an actual whitewash in a few years now, to be honest with you. To be truthful. I don't even worry about the rubber on the tires right now, to be honest with you guys. I can deal with that towards the end if I need to. Okay. That's probably a more realistic attempt. More the barrel. I can tell I want this, I, I love this vehicle so much, I just want it to look good, so excuse the extra airbrushing. But you guys probably like to see airbrushing, don't you? screen with the airbrush. <laughs> You're like, yeah, Mike, can you put it on camera? Okay. All right, I think I've, I've messed around with this guy enough. Let's, let's, let's give it a second here. Let me clean my airbrush, get some questions going with you guys. Question, do you know adding snow textures? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I do that a little bit later. We're gonna get Zal some books, boys. What do you say? All in the books, brother. Oh, let's see here. Oh. My boy Zal. I don't know. Are you going to bed yet, dude? Or are you waking up? I never knew what you were doing. And I, I, I got to pull this stuff out too, uh, in terms of in my in my material stash. Uh, I've got my woodland scenic snow with my mix of white pigments, and then throwing it down with a little pigment fixer, and then and then putting it in up in here, giving you that kind of. You now, Darren, if you're still awake and around there, this is you got this coming. <laughs> you got to get on this. This is one of my favorite looks. I love kind of that in between stuff, you know, where it's not really it's not really a full whitewash deal, uh, but you're getting some some intense weight there. And the whitewash chapter is pretty solid too. This is 70 second scale, uh, same same exact process, but it's that's all added white powder pig, pigments and stuff on top of the, the other stuff as well. Okay. Okay, let me see here. Book promo time. Oh, dude, remember this? I love that one. See, in this case, see how the, so those are the chips we were getting on the Stug. This is a late war piece where this is more appropriate, I felt. So I was getting that kind of similar idea. These are Tamiya paints, I believe. Um, see, I'm getting kind of the really abrupt scratches and, and that was that was like, seems to be a little bit more fitting to this subject. Whereas, um, yeah, you can see here the early work. See how it kind of patchy like that? And then you kind of work, you go from kind of shitty looking and then kind of a little bit less shitty looking. <laughs> Gotta keep going. So it does, ha what you saw does happen pretty often. So this guy, this guy looked from that shitty to another level, another layer of hairspray, and then another round of hairspray in the book. Uh, but where's the, the stug must be at the end of it. Here it is, okay. So this is, this model here is the one that's on the shelf behind me. 
exact same process. I painted the red on the, it's the same to me a model, just different, just an older one. Here we go, this is what I wanna show you. So here, I've, I've done a better job, I've, I've redeemed myself. <laughs> Okay, let me show you guys from Tank Art 4. This is in the whitewash chapter. So if you're wondering where this is. Okay, so to get the so that's this guy. So you can see that's a that's a much closer representation. Trying to get the clear. So I've done so I've done a better. That's what I needed to do was up my opacity. I was a little bit too too um too thin on the paint. So that's how you tell with that word. That's why I say always that's why I'm really uh, trying to hammer home. Even for me, you know, this is, this is, you know, I got to get on the court and play with you guys too. Is when I first start the chipping, because we're restarting this all over again. So I dab it out. Oops. Here, top goes on top, buddy. Okay. So let's try a little bit longer. We're good on time. I'm fine on time. You guys are good? Okay. So again, first time. First time is always. Anyway, so let's do the same spot. Controlled this time. It's coming off pretty fast again, which means I think there's a cure window, but that's that's a lot better looking. <laughs> it's not so crazy. So again, I'm using I'm using the um, see that? That's how I'm doing that. Just running it across that edge, real soft, real gentle. Yeah, it's coming right. So this hasn't cured. I'm I'm pushing too fast on the paint, is what this is. It's kind of doing the same thing. I should really give this like a half hour to an hour to set up pretty good and then come back to it. But we're, going to, we're just gonna be more precise and controlled than I was before. I'm gonna stay off the center of the panels for now. So what I could do in this case, if I'm, if I'm doing this as a real project, you just work the edges, just kind of get some general chipping going. Just kind of move around and not focus too much on anything. And then what you do is over time, as especially with this paint, in this particular white is is not kicking off fast enough for me. I, I th think maybe because I've I've got it over thinned a little bit. I'm trying to trying to figure out what it is. I don't need the tool to chip because I'm gonna paint it. I want the little bracket here to chip. I'm getting some nice small ones now. There's a mold liner that I didn't I didn't build this model, by the way, so I will take a disclaimer on that. <laughs> There's a mold line on there. I didn't, I didn't, it's not my fault. It's not my fault, boys. All those IPMS ju amps judges are, are going, they're scorning. They're scorning me. Okay, so, here. so we're just popping the top of that texture up a little bit, which is what I was more looking for. So if I rolled it over the edge of the fender like that, there we go. So this is this is what I was kind of looking for in general. Focus, 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 come on. Just kind of pulling up from the bottom of the fender. There's just a hint of water on the brush. There's almost no water going down. scruffier and that's okay so see how I got a nice break of the chip at the joint that's actually really nice right there because you can really use that that's gonna give you a nice visual effect actually what I do on fenders like this when when you have a plastic kit and you and you've got no photo etch or anything come in with your razor saw and just slice in at the fender joints anything like this and just put it like a fake break and then you get these you get this kind of right here so all I did was I took I took one of the, my old school razor saw, and all you do is, is just real carefully. Actually, I put a little knife line first, and then come in and I just saw that real quick. I put put little saw cuts. All my pans are threes, fours, everything like that. I always do that little trick. That's a little a pro tip. If you don't use photo etch, because I don't use a lot of photo etch anymore, because I can get a pretty convincing look just with the plastic fenders. Like that's that's pretty nice in there. Little gray, little red primer, old worn out, kind of scuffy. 
See I'm getting a little bit of that. Actually, that actually didn't come out too bad. You get a little bit of that kind of layered look. It's kind of really delicate scratches. See, I'm in that window for mission models in particular of the, of the delicate erasability factor. And that, if I play with this right, I can use to maximum advantage. Just getting some super delicate little chips. Let's go in the tool bracket. I'll repaint the tools at a later point, so I'm just going for the brackets right now. I'll get to chat in a sec, guys. If you got to run, if your day's dinner time, whatever, east, whatever you're doing, um, you can wrap up on the replay. Uh, I do thank you guys for hanging out. I'll get, I, put some final questions in the chat. We'll wrap up here in about five minutes. This is actually going <laughs> really well. I'll go a little bit longer. I'll do some wheels and stuff. Get the wheels going here. Again, I don't worry about the rubber tires just yet. Uh, I'll, re I'll repaint those by hand. Whoops. Get over here. Let's do a little drive sprocket love. See, that's much better. That's, that's kind of where I'm going with this now. That's way superior. Um, I'm getting some discolorations. It's early days. I don't want crazy, crazy chipping like what I had before. Because what I want is more contrast now between this stuff this really heavily damaged section, I want to be a little bit more aggressive with now. So I had a little bit of an early kind of hiccup. We fixed it. We are back in action. This is going much better now. There we go. Much more interesting now. Let's kiss that no tech light again. I love if you can if you can nail the no tech light, dude. Like I'll come by your, your model and go, dude, that is the most beautiful no tech light ever. Like, there's a little bit of a lip on the top edge of the Notec, like a helmet. I just wanted to see if you can kiss that a little bit and get a little bit of love going. It's still flaking off a little much. Ooh, 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 yeah, 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 okay. That's what I'm talking about. My boys back east is what I'm talking about right there. Do you see that? There it goes. It's working this time. Don't touch it. Move on. Leave it alone. <laughs> Enjoy that later on. So see how I had a, you saw that probably in action. There was a little bit of a pop one and I just kind of worked in and opened it up a little bit to kind of balance that out. So these are going much nicer here and we'll, we'll, we'll pop up here in a second and wrap some stuff up here and do the dry sprocket after this uh, visor, driver visor. I've sat in one of these before at, in Finland. F me, I don't know how they drive these things, dude. I don't know how you see out of that little, and you're, the wall's like, <laughs> Like you're in thing. And I'm not like the biggest dude, but I mean, I don't know how, you know, you got to be Chris Babb size. You got to be like five, one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm much happier now with that. It's looking good. We'll continue on with this model over time too. Let's do some drive sprocket love real quick. Doing some drive sprockets. Kind of going around the edge like it was spinning. Yeah, you don't want me singing. <laughs> Nobody wants me singing. You don't want me singing or dancing. There's either too much alcohol or I'm in too good a mood. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So remember these things are, are spinning, so the cuts are going to be a little bit different. Or the scratches, I should say. And I'm not worried about putting any, any vertical or any linear scratches just yet. And we'll actually experiment with this to see how long we can get chipping going over, over this model. You know, for those questions, you know, how long can you chip and all that kind of stuff. So this is what, Wednesday? Y'all remember that. So there you go. That's actually, that's, that's looking pretty solid. I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest with you guys. I could really use this now. And you can see how delicate this is even at this level. One thing I like to do with the Tamiya Stug, these are loose. If you've never built one of these before, the, the middle road wheels are loose and the two outer ones are, are sprung with a spring. So these are loose and so designed for like, you know, terrain modeling, diorama modeling. 
What I like to do with my Stoke 3s in particular, because if you look at them really, really closely, the suspension starts to sag over time and I get a little bit of a rake in them and stuff. And so what you do is you kind of weight the, the, the model and you can kind of push that nose down a hair. And you can do it with the Panzer threes and fours too. They, they, the suspensions wear up pretty fast. Um, and you can get a little bit of a rake in there, a little bit of a kind of a sports car. Like you'll see it on this one. This one I did it quite, I pushed it a little bit, but, but I wanted to. I wanted to. There's a, there's a bit of a nose down, there's a bit of a nose down rake with that. And all you do is you, you glue the, you put glue on the suspension and then you put a little weight. You know, you could use whatever you want. You just put a little, so what you do is you, you you glue all the suspension right now with the Tamiya glue. You got a little 15 minutes to work with it, and then you just put a little a little weight, and you just kind of push the nose down. You put you know just rest something you know whatever's heavy enough to rest it to push it down, and you can get a little nose down action. It looks pretty cool. Okay, the touch, but there's no water being transferred off almost. That's what you're kind of looking for with this, and you can see how I roll in slow, just slow roll it in to see what goes on before you really really push, because you can see when if you go back and watch the stream, you can see. On this side, when it first happened, when I put the water on way, way, way back in the beginning of this side, it wasn't going off. So I knew I could physically push it harder and change up. But this was coming off so fast that I have to back off. And so you have to be able to adjust yourself like that. And that's the learning process. That's the experience level that plays into that. And you have to do, and I will repeat this, you have to do a lot of these guys. This isn't gonna happen overnight. Like don't expect this to go well for the first five to 10 times, realistically, truth be told. Um, but let's see, it will come off in a bit. Don't do it, walk away, let dry. Yep, absolutely. So you said that John, same thing. I've said this before, I've seen you do this extremely helpful, maybe even more so if it isn't perfect. Yeah, absolutely. I'm totally fine making mistakes on stream. Again, I didn't even think that was a mistake. I would say realistically, that wasn't a mistake. That was um, really coming in and, and trying to, to be precise and really bring my A game and it wasn't quite going right. So not like, you know what I'm saying? Like you guys can see that. Okay, well look, I wanna, I wanna do better. Oh, it's my model. Like I want my model to be better looking. So let's let's fix it. And that's fixing your things is, is half the problem. And I will say the only model I've never had to do that with. So I've done something like this every single time. The only one is the JSU 122 went smooth all the way through. Do you add snow tech to Yeah, I'm half dead. Yeah, you're you're a baller, Zal. I appreciate you hanging up, man. Guys in Singapore and it's like what, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., you're up all night. Uh, Baz, what's up, brother? Uh, also, very interesting in modern vehicles. Do you see some very nice saber bikes? Yeah, absolutely. And I would, I would, I would do a YouTube channel just on whitewash anything. <laughs> That'll be my channel, whitewash. And just you guys would go like, hey, you're gonna give me a whitewash project, and I'm just gonna go do it <laughs> for a future idea. No, I, abs I absolutely love this. this is, I'm actually, you can tell, I'm in a good mood. And some of this, this all went really well. Over even the test stuff I did earlier, this all went really, really well, as as it should. Because sometimes when you don't do the, a little nervous, like, it's just gonna fuck up on stream. But it didn't. Yeah, let's do it. I still love this right here. And there's a little soft cast texture in the Tamiya stuff, and this one in particular, there's a little bit of a cast texture in that, and it captures that paint really nicely. Yeah. Cool beans. Cool beans. Coaching me, making rookie mistakes. <laughs> I hear it. you're going to be running. Them. You're going to be running after practice. Don't don't be thinking you're so funny. Uh, yeah, you guys are good time. Yeah, this is actually. I mean, other than Zal, other than poor poor boy Zal. Um, yeah, this is a good time for everybody. And it's yeah, you can feel the heat. You can feel the sun's moving now. Uh, yep, you guys are great. Uh, thanks for coming, kind of demo. Welcome. Yeah, Frank, I I do love it too, man. This is this is. Uh, that actually came here. Let's 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 see if I did the hold on. I don't know if I did good or not. It's a, it's probably a little heavy handed. You know what I mean? It's like probably too much worn off, but you know, kind of using let's, let's just take a peek at some stuff. And this is this is another thing that you do. Um, again, this is, comes into the experience. This is building up your, your your knowledge base, guys. So so here. So we're we're obviously too much white worn off compared to what's in, in the in the book here. Now that's just if I wanted to re replicate this guy, but you can see the uh, the armor bolts. Focus. Just pull that off of that. Okay. Sorry about that. It's just a test. Don't freak out. It's okay. It's okay. Just a, to me, out of the box model. So you can kind of see. Let's get off the glare there. So it's a little. It's it's like I said. I think it's probably a little bit much. But if we looked at where's our yeah, so I probably, what I'd want to do, 
So this is where using your references, because this is what everybody's gonna be using when they yell at you on the internet. They're like, dude, that's too much chipping. Technique, I'm probably right. But we don't know what this guy looks like in two weeks from now. So that's kind of how I, you know, rebuttal. <laughs> um, I love it, I, don't get me wrong. I think that looks effing awesome. I, I, would, I would run with that. Um, but yeah, this is definitely over, like over in here, all this kind of stuff. That's probably a bit of mud also on top of exposed green as well. So yeah, but that's how you do it. You just keep coming back and forth. You build up your, your repertoire. So these photos here are probably, I'm guessing kind of, they're obviously road marching. It's downtime. They got a, that looks like a fresh coat of whitewash. So they've been tasked with prepping for the battle. So in, in a week or two, this is going to look very different. You know, even the gears are all whitewashed. See, that's what you want to do is, is you want to forward think that a week or two in battle in terms of, okay, now that we know, where's this going to go? Okay, this is where you can start being the artist. You can start being the author. Okay, that's your reference. Okay, you see how opaque that white is? And then you come in here. And so I can argue with you, or at least debate it in terms of friendly friendly debate, that in a couple of weeks, those photos are gonna start looking like this. And that's where, that's where I like to take a lot of my stuff personally, just because I find it a little bit more interesting. Uh, Marino, I don't have Discord right now. I've used Discord in the past for gaming and stuff like that. And it's like Messenger on your, like Facebook Messenger on the phone and stuff. It, you know, you're constantly blowing up and, and I get I get nothing done. So I, we'll, we'll talk about it. Maybe I'll, maybe you guys have convinced me to throw Discord up. Dude, that's money. Dude, that, that right there and that little headlight. Like, I don't know if you guys can see how small those are. Yeah, it's that, I'm looking at those top, I'm not super worried about the bigger scratch, but that little tiny stuff up top, right up in there. Yeah, that's that's the power of, that's why I think the mission models has, it, it, yes, there's a skill set involved, and yes, you need a little bit, you know, you really need to hone in on it, And but that's what we're here for. You know, we'll fix everybody's problems. So, yeah, you guys be good. I appreciate everybody hanging out on this time frame, wherever you are in the world, I really do, honestly. Uh, last question here. Hey, Mike, totally off subject. I have Dragon Initial 1. That's what that boy is in Tiger Woods. Tiger One's like the one in the... Yep, yep, yep. I'm having all the hell of a time finding the bread. For... Okay, yeah. Um, I'll try to remember, Joe. Uh, it, I've actually got those out of some Russian language books. Um, some of the reference for it. Some of that... five. Is, I think it's 501 at Toy Long. So 501st. Um, really hard to find photos of. Um, I would dig around. And I'd actually pop on missing links and ask the boys to. Uh, Josh asked, "Hey, how where do you do you store completed pieces so they're safe from damage, run out of space, and need ideas?" Um, number my number one thing up here. Can you just see that? So there's a, there's IKEA shelves up there for all my gunpla, and then I've got the little the little LAC shelf there, which is that's the name of the IKEA shelf, the LAC L A C K. So I shelf and and I keep a really clean living space. Uh, I dust on the routine. Um, but guys will, if, if it's a competition level piece, uh, either keep it stored away in a plastic container out of, out of the way. I don't even have them out. Um, the Stug I keep out a little bit because it can handle a little bit more visual wear and tear if it gets a little bit beat up. I just kind of like to have it out. Um, Zal asks, what's on the menu for uh, future armor? Could you do oil paint rendering on red oxide primer? Yeah, I hate all the red primer model bullshit, but yeah, I can. Just because I love your brother. I will. Yeah, we'll definitely do. I'm thinking about maybe like like future demo, like just straight up demo of like building like maybe or even finding some stuff and then having all the various schemes. And then one day on stream, we'll do like a yellow, a red, a green, a gray, um, kind of just fucking with stuff and just, you know, just as a shape, you know, kind of kind of a little bit like what we were doing, doing with these guys here a little bit, you know, just various color combos and, and stuff like that. You know, so there's a three-tone under this and you're getting a little bit of the color pop. It was a really bright green I used to apparently. <laughs> you know, the multi-layer chipping and, and, and I should return and, and continue to, to 502, thank you, Joe. Yeah, again, I'm so rusty. And this is how I work too. This is a funny thing. So that model was, fuck, that's 10 years ago, whatever it was, 20, 2009, whatever it was. I've become an expert in the subject I'm on in the moment. Like in the last three days, I've been looking at Stug 3s and Barbarossa in particular for this prepping for the stream. So now I'm getting really familiar again, you know, and in, in the markings and in the unit stuff. Yeah, it's like those little hub scratches and stuff in there. You saw how fast that went too. When you go back and watch the stream again, you guys can really dive in and, and even, you know, pause it and, and look closely and stuff like that. So, yeah, pretty happy with that. That turned out pretty good. <sighs> Where exact record is 20? <laughs> no. oh, I don't know. Well, so Zach had help. By the way, BTW, Zach had some, had at least one dude coming in and he took a nap or two. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll, yeah, Joe, you're gonna, back to your question, it's, um, you're just gonna have to scour the net and then get on the heavy forums like Missing Links and the Access Group and really say, hey, I'm you know, trying to do this. There's a lot of guys that, I, I think David Burdenside, I don't know what kind, of, uh, what kind of references they have on that stuff, but 
Um, yeah, there's only, I think, a dozen tanks in that first grouping. Uh, somewhere around, it's not a lot, like less than 20, I think, or something. No, don't quote me though. <laughs> don't say Rinaldi said that because those guys will yell at me hard. Yeah, they don't, you know. Um, yeah, oh, hey, how are you? Oh, you're still good. Okay, no, no, yeah, yeah. You have a lot to watch. <laughs> You'll have some good times. Yeah. Okay, everybody good? I'm gonna eat. Um, yeah, thank you, Frank. Good to see you, man. Thanks for popping by. Uh, what else we got? Everybody good? Gareth, I know stream is all. Yeah, thank you guys. We had good times. This was a fun one. Uh, we will continue on. I promise we'll keep doing more on the turret, more on this guy. Um, and we'll continue on with some uh, tracks. Blue Oyster Cultist, what's up? Do you have a list of colors? Yes. So every time, uh, I haven't seen your name before, so you're probably new. Um, in all the previous streams up until today's, uh, click this. If you guys don't know, let me swap over here. So down in L description, yeah, down below, you'll see the title and you'll see like a sentence or two. You'll see the word show more. Click the show more, it pops up in the full description. I'll put today's in tomorrow. So I usually, I, I wake up in the morning. I have a lot of stuff to do today, uh, rest of my day. And then I'll put in a full description of all the colors used, or at least the brands in specific. And then anything on stream, you know, like what I do is, where did it go? Well, anyway, what I do is, you know, I'll just do this for you guys. You know, I always try to give you a label shot of it. So like all the mission stuff is pretty generic. I don't put out too much of the things, but all the oil paint stuff, it's all listed. All the brushes are listed. Um, my compressor, my airbrushes are listed. Did I clean that? I didn't even clean that one. All right, I got a clean airbrush now. Uh, what is a good chip to you, Mike? Less is more. So yeah, Zal, this is this is good chipping right here. Zoom, zoom. So that's some nice. That's nice 35th scale armor chipping on a, on a workable fender up in here for a whitewash. Don't want to get too crazy. If you want to go a little bit more longer in the field look, these are the chips themselves are really nice, Sal. Like these little up in here, those are really nice little marks up in there. Like that little uh, ejection port right there, that little, the subtlety of that, those are really nice chips. I think those are pretty good. This look is really nice too. I love this look too. I want to do a little bit more with it. We'll continue on with this turret though. And this one here, this one actually had some nice effects where it didn't cut all the way through. So you get a little bit of like the white through the white a little bit, which is a nice kind of like a branch scratching the turret side, but not cutting the paint. So these these are all good quality chips. It's 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 all about you know getting nice tight and scale. And you, what you do is you look at this Sal to your photos. You, you basically I know this looks good because I know from my experience of using the references and going back and forth, and then that experience builds up, and you're like, oh yeah, that looks that's what I'm looking for. So that's that's kind of how you, you develop that out. No, you're totally fine. Totally fine. You ask good questions. Um, yeah, and I'll tell you the coach is coming. You gotta pay attention. You're good. Uh, yeah, everybody good? Oh, we're all good. Signing off. Is that a wound? Is that a wound wart? It is, my friend. That is. That is the wound wart. I have all of them. I have all the all the uh, Hazen Play, Hazen Play twos, all of them. Um, I sold all the blue ones. I kept all the white ones. I'll do a book on the white ones. I'll do another stuff for the for the blue titan stuff, Justin. But yeah, I've got all the all that all the P Bandai stuff. That was an expensive <laughs> endeavor. <laughs> F off P Bandai. Um, you all know what I, those in my gun plot boys knows. Okay, everybody good? Yeah. Yeah, so this is this is the one. You've already seen this one. We'll get back to him pretty soon. That's the GPO4 rebuild. Uh, we're gonna be slapping some decals on him pretty soon. Um, most of my stuff, all my stuff on the shelf, Justin is just um it's just snapped up there's no nothing's painted up there uh which which one do you want to see i'll let you look at what, what do you want to see Justin? and then we'll sign off because the guy wants to see you're welcome Zal. absolutely you're fully welcome pete thank you yeah okay real quick good point pete because I, I i do want to mention this a lot um i rarely strip a kit in fact i haven't stripped a model since uh the tiger 2 in tank art 4 uh, and even then, I, if I, no wait, I did not strip it, I painted right over it. If you have it, no, you're totally, you're, you're totally fine, Justin. I'm just messing with you. I'll show that wooden mortar in a sec. Um, Peter, if I only recommend stripping a kit if the quality of the paint, and there, if there's texture or orange peel or runs is on there, if the paint job is like this, where it's a really nice paint job, like I'm not bragging, but this is a clean, simple paint job. There's nothing wrong with the paint job. And you can see, Saving a kit, oftentimes, just thinly spray some color right back over, especially if you have kind of the original colors underneath and they're not as nice as you like them to, you can come back in with the same tone and respray some stuff and tighten it up and you'll you'll be okay. Um, you know, if you're not trying to, you know, win, you know, GBWC or World Model Expo, 
it's good enough for government work. You know, you will rarely ever see a repaint. Um, it's important because I know a lot of people jump to stripping a kit right away. I'm over stripping kits. It's the, it's like, wow, I hate stripping kits down. So this one talks a lot about, um, Zoom back out real quick. Just we'll wrap up here. I'm, I'm fine talking for a little bit longer too. Okay, so this was my first paint job on the Tiger 2P to the stripping conversation. Didn't like the camo pattern, didn't like any of this stuff. It just wasn't going the way I wanted it to. Um, that's this. We, we we sprayed right over it. We put a whole fresh coat of Dunkel Gelb right. We went, we went up here to here, <laughs> right over it. Still didn't like it. And then I redid it one more time. All over the same, because I, I spray so thinly, and yes, there was a little buildup. In some places, there was a little bit of a paint buildup. But because I, I spray this down so so, thin, so thinly, you can get away with it. So stripping a kit, boys. Yeah, oh, yeah, you wanna see that? Oh, hold on. We'll sign off with the wound work. A little dusty. All right. This is the P-Bandai wound work out of the box. Ooh. Yeah, these are cool. Advances Zeta, there's a whole conversation for everybody. <laughs> you guys in the tank world. There's, there's, it's just sanded um, and snapped up because I'll have to pull all that apart and paint everything and then do all the, the markings and stuff. But yeah, I've got uh, Hazen Flay 2 Raw, the Hazen, the Hazen, the TR1 Hazen Flay, TR6 Hazen Flay, Hazen Flay 2 Raw, TR5 Hyru, uh, and the TR1 Hazel Custom. Uh, Hazel Advanced, I forget, the white one's Custom Advanced, whatever it's called. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's no way, there's no, there's no easy way for the for the camera switch thingy other than me. Need a hammer, okay. Yeah, damn with the one more place. Yeah, yeah, I know you guys are itching. I do, I, I do owe you guys more Gumpla versus little Mechatro Wego, so I apologize. We'll get to it, I promise you guys, we'll get to it. I can't wait, actually. I'm trying to get my armor guys out of the way so they can go off and do this stuff and then we'll just fuck with Gunplum all the time. Okay, I'm kidding. All right, guys. I'm out of here. Everybody, have a great rest of your day, rest of the week. I'll, uh, I'll see you Sunday if you're around. Uh, it'll be same time on Sunday, noon, my time. Um, anything else? Leave comments, questions, hit the like, hit the subscribe. Please share this, you know, get the word out there. Uh, we'll keep doing these. So this is what, number 11. So we're doing all right. Uh, always, always uh, appreciate you guys hanging out with me. So you guys all have a good one. I'm gonna sign off and go eat.